Uh, good morning, everybody. I'd like to call to order the City of West Palm Beach Special Magistrate Agenda for March 2nd, 2022. My name is Keith Davis. I'm the Special Magistrate appointed by the City to preside over today's agenda. Uh, for the record, it's a little after 9.30 that we had some technical issues to overcome. Uh, we are ready to proceed at this time. Uh, please silence your cell phones if you haven't already done so. Uh, if you're going to be speaking to me today about any of the matters on the agenda, your testimony needs to be sworn, so I need to place you all under oath. I can do that for everybody at the same time, so if you will be uh, offering any testimony today on anything on the agenda, please stand and raise your right hand. Thank you. Do each of you swear or affirm under penalties of perjury that your testimony today will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Thank you very much. You can have a seat. Um, we will... Um, we have an agenda, however, uh, we'll probably uh, be uh, starting this morning with uh, the respondents who are um, here in the room for their cases. We also may have a few cases with uh, city staff that has to, uh, who will have to be um, heard first so that they can be excused. So um, with whatever order we need to begin, let's go ahead and call the first case. First case number 6246 six, Elwa Place, CE 21110189, number 6246 six, Elwa Place. Oh, and I'm sorry, I should have said uh, for uh, folks who are here for their cases, when your case is called, please come up to the podium uh, to my right. Um, when the case is called, I will hear from the city uh, first. There will be testimony and there may be other documents that are shown on the screen that you'll have an opportunity to look at. Once the city has concluded its presentation, then I'll come back, hear from you. You can tell me everything that you feel is important about your case. If you have additional documents or photographs that you want me to consider, that would be the time to produce those. Once I've heard everything from both the city and the respondent, I will uh, in all likelihood today enter an order that resolves the matter. Uh, so with that being said, uh, let's go ahead and um, proceed with uh, the case that was just called. Good morning, Your Honor. Good morning. My name is Joe Valdez, City Inspector with the City of West Palm Beach. Um, this is a case at 246 Elwa Place. A citation was issued for a f white PVC fence that was erected without a permit. Um, it was cited on 11 12 21. It was given two extensions, one at 12 13. And I think at one at one thir thirteen twenty two. Um, the notice of violation was mailed on two eleven twenty two. It's posted on the property at two on two fourteen twenty two, and it was sent certified mail left with the individual on two fourteen twenty two. Um, the city would want to start. Um, finding this property because they have not responded to any of the uh there's been no application for a permit nothing no application nothing for permits no uh no phone calls to the city or anything okay officer valdez could you testify a little bit more about what you observed at the property that uh you believe is in violation okay well the main violation is the the fence was erected with with no previous permits being pulled. So, and also I noticed on the back that they had put a two foot extension to the fence, which is a also a violation. Fences cannot be bigger than uh, six feet. Are you referring to the white fence that's the, on the photograph right now? Well, I don't know if I had, I wasn't uh, able to get to the backyard, so, but there was sections of the fence that had, but I don't know if I was able to get those pictures. Okay, and where did you observe those sections of the fence? In the front, the sides? The, the back and on the, the south side and on the uh, east side. Okay, and did you send by regular mail as well? Uh, yes. Did you do uh, post city hall? I posted it. And was an affidavit of posting uh, signed by you? It was signed by me, yes. And were you looking for a specific amount of time and a specific um, amount? I would give them another 20 days and $50 a day after that. Okay. Um, Special Magistrate, the city would like to submit as evidence 
a copy of the documents in the file, including the affidavit of posting, notice of violation, certified mailing, uh, and the photos. All right. Um, is there anybody here on behalf of the respondent for this case? Uh, uh, there is not. Um, that is granted uh, the city's evidentiary case file, including all the documents that were uh, specified and testified about uh, are um, part of the record in this case. Uh, I do find the city has proper notice, even though the respondent has uh, not appeared this morning. Is there anything else on behalf of the city on this case? No, sir. Okay. Uh, I will accept the city's recommendation. Uh, all I do find that the property uh, remains in violation as cited based on the testimony and the evidence. Uh, I will allow an additional 20 days for the respondent to comply. After that, daily fines of $50 per day will be assessed until compliance is achieved. Thank Case you, number 133416 Broadway, CE 21120217, number 133416 Broadway. Good morning. Good morning. Atilio Bilal, Inspector for the City of West Palm Beach. The property was initially cited on December 15th of 2021 for interior work and exterior work being done without permits. The uh, sanitary sewer was replaced on the south side of the property. City received proper posting via regular mail, certified mail, posting on site and at City Hall. The uh, person received uh, left with an individual the certified mail on uh, 214 of 22. Uh, they have applied for permits for this work that was commenced. However, the plans were uh, failed on 28 of 22. Uh, no further corrections have been made to obtain the, the permits. I spoke with uh, the individual regarding this property and they are working diligently to resolve the failed comments. Uh, city is requesting 30 days to obtain uh, permits and uh, inspections for the sanitary sewer line that was replaced. After that, $100 a day. Officer Belial, do you have, we've seen photos on the screen. Are those the photos that document your observations of these alleged violations? Yes. Special Magistrate, the city would like to submit as evidence in the case the... Can you go to the next photos? And can you describe um, a little bit about what we're seeing in the photos if you haven't... If Scroll down. This is the sanitary sewer line that was replaced on the south side of the property. And go to the next photos. This is more pictures showing the old sanitary line um, and then see the cast iron to the left of the photo and the new PVC um, evidence that was replaced. It's in the, the, the ditch line there. Go to the next photo. There's the sanitary sewer line that was replaced and installed. Proceed to the next photo. There's the new PVC stubbed out. Go to the next photo. There's the new clean out tying into the main. And proceed to the next photo. And this is, uh, these permits have been obtained uh, before magistrate uh, hearing for the windows and doors. So they have obtained some permits, uh, but not all. And they're working diligently to, uh, to resolve the issue. Special Magistrate, the city would like to submit as evidence in the case the notice of violation, um, the certified mailing. Um, attorney, uh, excuse me, Officer Belial, did you prepare an affidavit of posting? Yes. And what date was that, if you have that? Affidavit of posting was posted on the property at 215.22. Thank you. I'd like to submit a copy of that also as evidence um, as well. Um, the certified mailing documents. Thank you. Okay. Um,
couple of questions, uh, Mr. Bilal. Um, you said the permits for windows and door work have been obtained. Uh, it looks like there was some interior work also. Has that permit been obtained or is that still in process? They're still in process. Okay. That they're, they're getting a, a master permit and obtaining all sub permits under that master for the plumbing, electrical, any other uh, trades uh, for the work that was being performed. So your recommendation in this case would be 30 days to get all required outstanding permits and also have the sewer work inspected and approved. Yes. The rest of the in, the rest of the work doesn't have to be. No, because no no work commenced inside uh, other than demolition, but the sanitary sewer did get replaced. Okay. Let me uh, let me come over, sir. If you could tell me your name and address, please. Jonathan Manoli, 3416 Broadway. Okay. And uh, are you the owner of the property? One of yes. Okay. Um, you had a chance to hear the testimony and uh, there were some photographs. Do you have any, any issues with any of those documents? Or? No. All right. Um, uh, the city's file containing the documents that were um, displayed as well as the notice documents, those will all be, um, as uh, enumerated by the city attorney, those are all part of the record. Um, I do find proper notice with the documentation respondent is also present. Sir, why don't you go ahead and you can tell me about uh, the case now. Uh, well, we because we had the demolition permit, so we started working, right, breaking down the house, uh, and then we're waiting on our permits, so we decided to start the sewer line, and yeah, and then we stopped. Okay. Um, the city is recommending that uh, you be given an additional 30 days from today to um, get the rest of the permits issued and then also have that sewer line uh, inspected and, and approved perfect. Um, do you have any any disagreement with that or, or any different requests no okay. perfect um, special magistrate justice uh, housekeeping i see a stop work order on the screen um, officer belisle um, or inspector belisle um, can you testify as to the date and as to the date there we go 2 15 21 and that's in respect to the testimony today about your observations of yes. the alleged violations. Special Magistrate, the city would also like to submit the stop work order as evidence. That is part of the record, yeah. Thank you. All right, anything else? Anything else, sir? Okay, uh, as I said, I did find proper notice. I think based on the testimony and the evidence that I've reviewed, uh, I find the property remains in violation as cited. Uh, I will. Um, enter an order that allows 30 additional days for the outstanding permits to be obtained and for the uh, sewer work that has been completed without, that has been performed without a permit to be inspected and passed. So that needs to, you know, you wanna have that inspected as soon as possible because if there's a problem that needs to be fixed within that 30 day period as well. Um, once the permits are issued, the other work that's outstanding will travel under the building permits. Um, if the permits are not issued within the 30-day period and, and the uh, sewer line is not, um, does not pass inspection, then I will um, uh, assess daily fines of $100 per day until compliance is achieved. So that's why I said you want to make sure you get that sewer line inspection done as soon as possible. If I fail, sorry, if I fail, let's say I fail the sewer line system, does that still count or no? What? Uh, what we can do, Magistrate, is that if the the comments are generated and they're failed uh, on an additional time, you can have your plumber contact us and apply for just the sanitary sewer line and, and permit that, that sewer line independently of your home. That way we can co close this code violation. Okay, thank you. That that will comply the case. Okay, that, that, that I have no objection to that. Do you understand that, sir? Yeah. Okay, then um, we'll structure it uh, that way. That, mm -hmm. uh, I adopt that uh, recommendation as well. Okay, uh, I will sign that order. Thank you very much for coming. Thank you. Have a great day. 14 435 34th Street, CE 21120218, number 14 435 34th Street. Atilio Bilal, Inspector for the City of West Palm Beach. Property was initially cited on December 15th of 2021 
for uh, interior alterations without permits or inspections of all trades. Uh, city received uh, proper service by, via regular mail, certified mail, posting on site and uh, at City Hall. Notice of violation was mailed on 219, or excuse me, 29 of 22. The uh, certified mail was left with an individual of 215.22. Affidavit was posted on the property of 215.22. Uh, the permits have been applied for, but have not been, they haven't paid the fees in order to obtain, uh, to start the plan review process. In order to proceed forward with obtaining the permits, they need to pay for the, the permit fees in order to start the plan review process. Um, if they pay for the fees, we can start the plan review process, but until then we cannot uh, initiate plan review. Uh, city's requesting um, 30 days to obtain permits and inspections for the work that was performed. After that, $150 a day. Inspector Belial, was a stop work order issued? Yes, it was. And what date was that? December 15th of 2021. And what are your observations at the property of um, alleged violations? The property received a uh, net picture, uh, new air conditioning installed, uh, new plumbing, um, renovations to the interior uh, building structure, um, new floor joists, uh, floor joists and uh and it appears to be uh new electrical uh installed as well and are your observations captured in the photographs in yes. the file and did you prepare an affidavit of posting yes i did special uh, magistrate the city would like to submit as evidence in the case the stop work order the notice of violation the certified mailing documentation the photographs and the affidavit of posting Thank you. Is there anybody here on behalf of the respondent for this case? All right. The city has proper notice, even though the respondent is not present. Uh, the city's uh, evidentiary case file, including uh, the documents that were testified about and the uh, documents specified by the city attorney are made part of the record in this case. Um, based on the testimony and the evidence, I do find that the property remains in violation as cited. I will accept the city's recommendation in this case, allow 30 additional days for the respondent to obtain the necessary permits and inspections for the work that has already been performed. Uh, compliance is not achieved within that time frame. Daily fines of $150 per day will be assessed until compliance is achieved. Thank you. Number 15713 Park Place, CE 22010041. Atilio Belial, inspector for the city of West Palm Beach. This property was initially cited on 1-4 of 22 for a replacement of a sanitary sewer line behind the property and the easement without proper permit or inspections. Uh, notice of violation was mailed on 2-9 of 22. We sent via regular mail, certified mail, proper posting on site, and uh, posting at City Hall. Uh, person received the certified mail at the front desk uh, reception area, uh, delivered on 214 of 22. Uh, the city is requesting to obtain the permit and inspections for this sanitary sewer line uh, within 30 days, after that $50 a day. Inspector Belial, was there a stop work order at all? Yes, there was. It was a uh, stop work order was posted on 1-4 of 22. And the photos that are in the file, do those uh, accurately reflect your observations of yes. the alleged violations? Yes. And did you prepare an affidavit of posting? Yes, I did. Affidavit of posting uh, was prepared on 2-15 of 22. Special Magistrate, the city would like to submit as evidence the stop work order, the notice of violation, the certified mailing documents, the affidavit of posting, and the photographs. Thank 
you. Is there anybody here on behalf of the respondent for this case? The respondent is not present, but the city has proper notice with the notice documentation that uh, has been uh, provided. Um, the city's evidentiary case file containing the documents uh, that were testified to and the documents enumerated and specified by the city attorney are made part of the record. Based on the testimony and the evidence, I do find the property remains in violation as cited. Has there there's been not even been an application at this point? This is kind of a tricky situation, sir. The um, the neighbor's sanitary sewer line um, runs into this property uh, where this property had installed a pool. They disconnected. Uh, Monique, can you go up to the to the picture showing where the pool and the sanitary sewer line uh, exist? In order for this, uh, this property owner to install, that's a good picture right there. Uh, to install this pool, if you can see in the middle of the, the, the picture there, there's a sanitary PVC line that ran to the neighbor's property. Uh, this, this is kind of a delicate situation because at one point in time, this may be uh, one property and they had the subdivided into two separate properties. However, this sanitary line is a four inch line and the pool contractor or the general contractor modified this to fit the pool in here, of course, and to avoid an unsanitary condition, they reconnected it. However, when they reconnected it, they reconnected it with three inch PVC undersizing it. Now it's going to be, be uh, become a stoppage and an issue to the neighbor. Um, they just need to rectify this situation by properly installing it. If, if uh, it existed 20 years ago or if it existed 50 years ago, this needs to be addressed. We've talked to utilities, we've talked to uh, the homeowner, we've talked to the general contractor. We think we have a resolution to resolve the problem. However, this has not been addressed. Does that issue, um, in the city's opinion, constitute a threat to public health, safety, and welfare? Not, not at this present moment, but if they disconnect it, it will. Okay. Um, and it will constitute to, to have backups and stoppages on that property that, to the neighbor. But if uh, you testified that you're there, sounds like there are discussions going on and a plan to fix this. So if that happens correctly, then this, that problem will be resolved. Yes, we'll, we will resolve it. And I have been in communication with the, the general contractor um, with, uh, with this situation, and I think they've come to a resolution to, to fix this. Okay, well, given that, I, I will then accept the city's recommendation. In this case, I'll allow 30 days for uh, uh, to obtain the required permit and have the appropriate inspections passed um, in order to achieve compliance. If compliance is not achieved uh, within that time frame, daily fines of $50 per day will be assessed until compliance is achieved. And I suspect if it goes sideways, uh, you'll be bringing this one back. So, all right, thank you. Thank you. Next case, number 36, 1330, 11th Street, CE 21110228, number 36, 1330, 11th Street. Good morning, Officer Lester West Palm Code. Good morning. Good morning, sir. Property was... Certified mail was returned to the city on 11-26-2021. Property was posted 2-17-2022. Uh, I've had some correspondence with the owner of the property and the property was cited for uh, junk and inoperable vehicle, uh, inoperable vehicle in public view, repairing and or replacement of roof, uh, trimming of hedges, obstructing right of way, cleaning of easement, which is behind the unit, and numbering standards. I am asking for, in regards to the junk and operator vehicle, I'm asking for 10 days. Either it's stored in a, which you don't have a garage, so the removal of the inoperable vehicle, 10 days. And the uh, easement, I'm also asking for 10 days to come into compliance. And the numbering standards, I'm asking for 10 days. And to omit 74-1C4, obstruction of public right of way, that one behooves me why it was on there. So remove that one, please. 
What say that one? I'm sorry. 74-4C4, obstruction of public right of way. There's no tree at the sidewalk, so. And the roof, Mr. Uh, what's his name? Mr. Randall is going to have to explain. He's going through an insurance issue with the roof and has been going through this situation for at least seven months now. So I'm going to let the special magistrate determine the time factor on that. Otherwise, I'm asking for those ones that I indicated, the 10 days for the vehicle the address and the uh, easement, 10 days and I'm asking for that or $50 per day after. Can you explain, I'm not clear on what uh, the violation of 74-4C5 is. 74-4C5 is cleaning up the easement, yeah. which is in the rear of the home. If you pull in real tight, Mooney, please. It, it's overgrown. It's just have a lot of- oh, So over, it's in the back? Yes, sir. I said, I'm looking at the front here. I'm like, yeah, oh. no, the easement, Anytime you see that 74-4C5, it's always pertaining to the okay. easement alley areas of rear of properties. Okay. And every property in this uh, neighborhood needs to maintain that particular one, so it's on every violation that I write. So I'm asking for the 10 days on that. Okay. And then 4C4? Omit. You're not proceeding with that violation? Correct. Okay. Officer Luster, did you prepare an affidavit of posting? Affidavit was uh, posted City Hall and property on 2-17-2022. Okay. And the photographs that have been up on the screen, mm -hmm. did those photographs, are they consistent and uh, reflect what your testimony is about your observations? Absolutely. Special Magistrate, the uh, City would like to submit as evidence a copy of the notice of violation, certified mailing documents, affidavit of posting, and the photographs. Thank you. Um, sir, if you could tell me your name and address. Uh, name is Randall Warthen, and the address is 1330 11th Street. Thank you, sir. And you're the owner of the property? Yes, sir. All right. Did you have any questions for Officer Luster or any, any uh, questions about any of the photographs or documents that have been discussed? Well, the only um, question I have, because I've just, well, I don't know, because I got to check my address, because I don't, I don't have an address error, but I have a, a property lien against my property right now. I just, I'm, I'm going to let you tell me everything you want to tell me, but my specific question is right now is if you have any any um, comments or questions about any of the photographs or documents that have been shown. Um, well, the only thing about it, I was telling her about the roof, the issue that's going with my roof is that right now I'm in the process of um going through a debate with my insurance company my mortgage company because my insurance company has cut me a check to have my roof replaced but my mortgage company they wants to give they wants to turn around they want to give me a loan instead of endorsing the check for long um, to get my roof repaired is it a, a complete replacement of the roof or yes okay all right so housekeeping i, I will um The record does include all of the documents and photographs that were testified about, as well as the, uh, um, the documents in the evidentiary case file, including those specified by the city attorney. That's all part of the record in this case. Um, all right, so let's t let me just ask real quick about all the other stuff besides the roof. Do you have any issue uh, the, the city's requesting that you, those be complied within the next 10 days? With the only thing I have the, as far as the easement in the, in the back of my property because the, the trees are not on my property. They're like in the other side of the easement. So I don't know if, am I responsible for cutting that, cutting that back? Are they overhanging into your property? Yes, sir. So I'm not going to tell you who's responsible. I, I I'm comfortable telling you you are to the extent that anything is hanging over your property you are it's my understanding at least that you have the right to take care of the part that's overhanging under your property in terms of trimming that I'm not going to opine on any other legal nuance but my understanding is even if the tree is on the adjacent property if it's overhanging onto yours you you have the right to take care of that so okay let me ask officer luster if, if, if he if he does that is that going to cure the code enforcement? no in regards to easement alleys and right-of-ways it's an easement it's like a seven to ten foot easement behind every home right. and or property 
and per code, abutting properties are to maintain half of easements, half of alleys. Understood. They're, they're, not, they're not per se the owner's property, but under the code, they're supposed to maintain it. So the question would be if there's a tree that's interfering with the easement, but the, the root and the trunk and all of that is actually on the other side. That, that's my question. That, that's what we're talking we're, about. He, he would still have the right to maintain perhaps it. Perhaps the obligation to cut back to the property right. line. Maintain it. Now, not not one remove thing. it, not cut it out, to just maintain it. Yeah, because. All overgrowth. Because now, think about it, I have been cutting it over the overburst to keep it from growing down, but so you want to just cut back completely? Yeah, just maintain it. I mean, just get it into a, a, um, a condition where it's not overgrown. Okay. Yeah, yeah, understand it. Okay. And then the other issue was the, was the vehicle. Um, that's going to need to be taken care of as well. Um, yes. I think 10 days is a reasonable um, amount of time to take care of that. And the address, sir. Pardon? And the address. Oh, and the numbering standards. Mm -hmm. I think that 10 days is a reasonable amount of time to get the, and that you just have to get the, the address numbers on the property in a code compliant manner so that they're the, they're visible, they're the correct size, correct color, so they can be basically mm -hmm. seen by emergency vehicles if they need to know what your address is. So, um, I, I, again, I agree that 10 days is reasonable for that. So, let's go back to the roof because that, that really is your, your biggest issue, it sounds like. So, you've been dealing with your insurance and mortgage company for? About six months. About, about, seven, about seven, eight months, I say. Do you, do you, is there a resolution that is um, going to be happening quickly, or is this going to continue to drag on? Well, well, right now, my insurance company, they're, they're trying to find another avenue that they probably can go around by getting me the funds to get my roof replaced. So right now, I'm still kind of waiting on them to give them response back. Is this in uh, litigation? Is there a lawsuit? Um, about this at this time? No, no, I, I haven't took any any um, uh, lawsuit actions yet. But uh, but uh, but after the day, because I'm trying to pressure them to see if, because if anything, I might just go ahead and just go ahead and get the loan with the insurance company. I mean, with, get the loan with the mortgage company, and then just um, make the best of it. What uh, looks like there's a is there a tarp up on the roof? There was, but I took it down though, because there, there was no need. Anymore. Yeah, so there was no need for it anymore. Yeah, it was shredded all up. Well, that's what I was going to yeah. ask. I, if there's a tarp, I, yeah, just, it was. I, I would require that to be either replaced or um, put in a condition that, that's not all torn up. But you're saying it's not there at all? No, I took it off. Um, No, I'm happy to give you some reasonable time to get this resolved, but um, I don't want this. This can't. Um, do you? Do you? Based on the discussions you've had with your insurance and mortgage companies, if I give you 90 more days for this roof, do you think that you can move that along within that time frame? Yeah, 90 days should be good. If 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 it's not sufficient, I'll I'll come back in and inform you about it. Okay. Is there anything else you'd like to tell me, sir? Um, as well, just I just got one more question for for Miss Valerie. So, mm -hmm. as far as the trees on the side, you you just want me just because I've been maintaining them, you know, been cutting the trees back. But I just you want to cut up higher or how how do you want how you Every, want to everything in the easement that would say from your height down, just clear that area halfway of the easement, just. Okay. Mow all the overgrowth, the grass and weeds that's tall, any overhanging trees, just cut them to where it's tall as you are. Tall, tall, so tall just maintain tree. that particular easement area. And, and, and you half. And, and, and what is what the thing with the sidewalk? Uh, that that is not in this violation. That's on the other lien that's running on the property oh, okay. for clean and sanitary uh, of the sidewalk, outdoor storage. Can replacement, all of those are on an old lien from 11 22 2018. So those were not in my violation because they're already running fines for it. The thing about that in this case, 
uh, yeah, that, that's not, uh, not a part of this case. That's not a part of this, the case that we're here on today. Okay. All right. Now, got, no, sir. Yeah, I have one more question. Now, as, as far as the lien goes on the property, is once I have all this resolved, this any way I can have it wavered or reduced? Well, the city has uh, has a process for that, but um, I believe before you can even uh, ask to be heard about that, everything on the property has to be That'd in be compliance. Good. So you'd have mm -hmm. to fix all of these issues before you can, mm -hmm. is that correct? Yes, yeah, that's correct. You can come back and ask for a reduction. Mm -hmm. Everything on the property has to be in good shape. Okay, good now shape. I have one more question. Now, in, in the future now, she, Ms. Valerie has been mailing me out the citations, but I have not been receiving none of these citations in the mail. The only ones I've been able to receive was when they were actually post a notice on the building itself. So I'm trying to figure out what department I can go to and check to make sure they have the right address for me. I'm, I'm, I'm yep. sorry, I had a hard time understanding Ms. Luster. He's asking know. about his mailing address. He hasn't received any other regular mail or certified mail. Certified mail is returned to us, to the city, on 11 26 2021. Mm. Um, I'm not sure either, maybe because you don't have an address. I don't know. That's They'll post your address, see. and maybe the post person will leave you the mail. But I mean, they always got an address. They will not leave mail. But they always they always, they still deliver mail to my house. Mm, I can't answer that question. Uh, yeah, I, don't, I, I mean, the the city has legally taken the appropriate steps to provide notice with yes, mailing it to to your to the address Correct. and also posting the property. And, and you are here this morning, so you, you obviously received notice. It's, it, uh, and so through one of those ways. Yeah, but is, is, is it a part where I could check the mailing address though? Sorry, say that again? Is, is, that a, is that the the part where I can check the mailing address to make sure they send it to the right address? Well, the law requires the city to send it to the address that's on file with the property appraiser or the tax collector. So you probably want to check and see what address they have for you. And if it's not the correct one, you need to fix that. Okay. But that, that would be your responsibility. But now, is property appraiser in this building? No. Property appraiser, no. County. It's a oh, county. county. That's the county building. At the county building, and you go to property appraisers. But okay. on Papa, this is his address. Okay. On Palm Beach County, Papa, property well, appraiser. What Ms. Luster is saying is that the database uh, that's online for the property appraiser shows the correct address. Mm -hmm. Okay. So. It shows this address. Okay. Anything else, sir? No, that's it for me. Anything else from the city? No, sir. Okay. Uh, so in this case, the city has proper notice. The respondent is mm -hmm. present. Um, I have made uh, the documents part of the record. Based on the testimony and the evidence that I have heard, I will find that the property remains in violation as cited, with the exception of 74-4-C-4, which has been withdrawn by the city. Um, for everything other than 18103B, which has to do with the roof, uh, I will accept the city's recommendation. I'm gonna require those those items to be complied within 10 days, and that's the vehicle, the numbering standards, and cleaning up the easement. Mm -hmm. um, if those are not complied within 10 days, there will be daily fines of $50 per day until compliance is achieved, so you wanna get that stuff done within the next 10 days. Okay. Um, based on um, the testimony from the respondent regarding the issues with the roof, 18103B, I'm gonna allow an additional 90 days for compliance on that. Uh, but again, after that, there will be daily fines of $50 per day until compliance is achieved. So you want to make sure you get that, this roof taken care of in the next 90 days. And if there's additional problems, stay in touch with, with uh, Ms. Luster and the city. Um, and, um, you know, if you need additional time, you can come back and ask. Yes. Um, but short, short of that, and, and if you come back to me and, and ask for more time, I'm gonna to wanna to hear that there's been some good faith effort to move this, move this thing along. Uh, and that the reason it's not is beyond your control. Okay. okay? All right, thank you very much. Now, well, I got a question from Ms. Lester. Now, as far as the garbage cans on the side of the house, can I, can I get away with leaving them on the side, side of the house? Put them out of public view, but that's one part of this case, but put them out of public view. But, but in the back of the house? When, yes, sir. When they're not out for pickup, leave them out of public view. Okay. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. I, could, I do have kids. But. Thank you. All right. Have a good day. Next case number three three seven two one Henry Avenue number B C E two two zero one zero zero five six number three three seven two one Henry Avenue.
Good morning, Sonia Vin, City of West Palm Beach, Code Enforcement. This property was cited on January 6, 2022. Notice of violation was posted at the property and City Hall on January 7, 2022. Certified mail was sent and returned on January 7th, 2022. The property was cited for exterminate for pests, infestation of rats in unit B at this property, delinquent um, business tax, as well as the front part of the property um, landscape area must be grass. At this time, um, I have not made contact with the owner of the property. However, as of this morning, I received a voice message from a property manager um, by the name of Tyler. I'm not sure if the, he's the person that's presented present here today, informing that he's in the process, process of hiring a pest control to cure the infestation of rats. Um, and had questions about the landscape area. As of today, the property is still in violation of um, 18.1024, as well as 94.442 C1, code 18.162 A, which is a delinquent um, business tax is complied. The city is requesting an additional um, 60 days to gain compliance or $100 per day until compliance is achieved. Uh, today, I have the tenant that was residing at this unit, grandmother, that would like to testify of the conditions of the, the property. Did you say the rental license violations complied? Yes. Officer. So just the uh, landscaped areas and the extermination. Correct. Thank you. Officer Bins, very quickly, um, did you uh, complete an affidavit of posting? Uh, the affidavit of posting was complete and turned in. A copy of the notice of a violation was posted at the property. Very good. And did you also send uh, regular mail? Correct. And do certified the, mail. Do the photos that we've seen on the screen, do those reflect uh, your observations um, at the property in addition to um, what the tenant will be testifying to. Correct. The photos with the rats and the videos were um, obtained by the tenant in Unit B. Okay. Yeah. Special Magistrate, we'll um, move for our evidence after um, the tenant testifies. Thank you. Uh, sir, if you can go ahead and tell me your uh, name and address, please. Oh, I'm Tyler Highland, uh, address 7592 Great Oak Drive. I'm the property manager who had contacted the code officer. So this is the tenant's grandmother that's representing the tenant. All right. Yes, ma'am, why don't you tell me your name and address? Good morning. We'll come right back to you in a minute, sir. My name is Betty Moore, and I'm Derek uh, Tysanger's grandmother. Derek uh, rented the property there, and he moved in around March of last year. It was supposed to have been a year lease, but into around July, of last year, they started seeing these rats after being there a couple of months. The rats were mainly in the kitchen area and they were run across the dishes, the counter, they were coming from under the stove, and then they started coming from under the cabinets. And this was every night and every day, rats, rats, rats. And um, he contacted the landlord and told them the situation. They did nothing to rectify the situation. They did send a gentleman out there, and all he did was put some of these black, uh, I believe they're the kind of traps that you see around the outside of building. They put that, they put one in the kitchen, and they put a couple on the outside of the building, but they never came back to check them or anything. And that's all I've been hearing, rats, rats, rats. And they did have some other problems with leaking, but they never attended to any of the complaints. So what they did, Derek withheld December's rent because he wanted them to try and fix the situation, with, mostly with the rats, because they were running all over the kitchen, all over the dishes, 
and there are three small children in the house. And I'm surprised they haven't gotten sick yet from all this. Every day, every night, these are the creatures that they see. And I don't know how they're coming in, but through the ceiling, the walls, or something, they always hear scratching in the walls. And after all, this is a very old house. It's almost 100 years old. But um, they need to find out how these rodents are getting inside the house every day. It never stops. So what Derek, when he withheld December's rent, within two weeks of the rent not being paid, they filed for an eviction to put them out. So we went to eviction court around the first week of February. So Derek agreed they wanted, and they didn't even want what he had did, he put money into the register at the courthouse for December's rent. He put the money there. So when we went to court for the eviction, they didn't even want to renew the lease. They could have gotten their money, but his point was he wanted them to do something about the rats because the small children in the house, and even when they're sitting down eating, these rats were so bold that they would come out and crawl across the counters while they're eating. And they're running and screaming and, and calling me grandma, grandma. And I, I just, it was too much. I've never seen anything like, like this. And this is uh, 2022. And they have rodents inside where people are living with the infestation is horrible. Betty, you referenced Derek. Is that um, Derek Tysinger, the tenant? Yes, ma'am. That's my grandson. Thank you. And Officer Benz, the, per the testimony of Miss um, Miss Betty, um, are the photographs that we've been seeing, did you receive those from the tenant, Derek? Correct. And the other photographs in the, um, that we have in the file, do those uh, reflect your observations with respect to the um, alleged landscaping violations? Correct. Thank you. Special Magistrate, I don't have further questions. I would like to submit evidence at this point. Um, anything else from the city before I hear from the respondent's representative? No. All right. Good morning, sir. Now you could tell me your name and your Good morning. Address. Uh, Tyler Howland, uh, 7592 Great Oak Drive. I'm the property manager on behalf of the owner. Um, Basically, uh, we, we've uh, paid off the outstanding balance on the business tax license, um, simply looking for more time to have that. I wanted to get more specifics on the landscaping violation. And then additionally, we've solicited a uh, pest control company to come out and give us a uh, termite, or I'm sorry, a rodent estimate. Um, they did need to get access to the unit um, in order to do so, uh, given the fact that unit B is experiencing the majority of the issues. Um, they had attempted, they were provided with the tenant's contact information, but were unable to get in touch with them. Um, as of today, the tenant should have actually vacated the unit, so we'll be taking back possession and we'll be able to facilitate that. Okay. Special Magistrate, the city submits the copies of the notice of violations, certified What's mailing information, affidavit of posting, and, and the photographs and emails. Um, photographs coming through in and the emails um, three weeks to find a new as evidence. Place. All right, sir, the, there were a number of photographs and documents that were testified about. Do you have any any questions or objections to those documents? To the uh, the photographs of the... Photographs, the, uh, the notice documents. Oh, well, the only thing I will say is um, it's actually clearly stated in, in the lease that the a tenant, in terms of a division of tenant and landlord responsibilities, the tenants are responsible for the extermination of uh, pests, rodents, termites, things of that nature. Um, granted, that is counterintuitive because we do want to maintain the, um, you know, safe living conditions and everything, but um, I just want to make that noted. Okay. Um, I, I will make part of the record the documents, photographs um, that are in the city's file and that have been uh, shown today and, and testified about uh, and as uh, specified by the city attorney. Um, regardless of um, hold on, hold on. which um, party is responsible, but based on the lease, I think that the, um, the evidence um, 
nevertheless shows that uh, the city code is, has been violated, regardless of whose responsibility um, the lease puts that burden on. Um, so I do find proper notice in this case. Based on the testimony and the evidence, I will find the property remains in violation um, in terms of 18102-4. Uh, that's the extermination section and 94442C1, which is the landscaped areas, must be sodded. Um, I find uh, property has complied with 18162A regarding the rental license. Um, I will allow, uh, I'll accept the city's recommendation. It was at 60 days? Correct. 60 days to comply after that daily fines of $100 per day will be assessed until compliance is achieved. And if you have specific questions on the, what uh, sod or all I can that, answer that. Speak um, after. with Ms. Bins offline and, and she can give you some direction. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you for coming in, ma'am. Case number 32 8 Street, CE 22020055, number 32 Street. Good morning. Natalie Clark, City of West Palm Beach Code Compliance. 82337th Street was cited on February 3rd of 2022. The property and City Hall were posted on February 4th of 2022. Affidavit of posting was also completed on February 4th of 2022. Certified mail was sent on February 4th of 2022. It was signed COVID-19. Um, while doing my routine patrol of um, Zone 11, I observed um, a tree that was improperly um, trimmed. It was hat racked. Um, I've had contact with um, a young lady who identified herself as the property owner's daughter. Um, she did state that the landscaper did cut the tree, but she was aware of um, the hat racking code standard. Um, the city is asking for a one-time fine of $250. Has uh, Ray, uh, sorry, has the city arborist taken a, a, a look at this and uh, does he have an opinion on whether the tree's gonna come back or not? Um, it shows signs of life. Ray hasn't seen it, but it, I do see um, some new growth um, upon reinspection. from the city did you have some questions just a couple very quick um officer clark in in um within your affidavit of posting um is it accurate that you also did regular mail correct yes and the photographs that have been up on the screen do those accurately reflect the observations of the hat racking that you're seeing yes you they do special magistrate the city would like to submit as evidence copy of the notice of violation, certified mailing documentation, affidavit of posting, and the photographs. Thank you. Um, let me come over and hear from the respondent. Ma'am, if you could tell me your name and address, and then you can tell me about uh, the tree. My name's Tamara Taylor. My address is 823 37th Street, West Palm Beach, Florida, 33407. Yes, ma'am. So, I initially had the tree cut because it was getting out of hand. I also know that um, it's a fine if it's over the sidewalk. So basically j just trying to maintain it. And in the corner um, at night, it was kind of dark. So I was just trying to make sure not only to not impose on the city's property, but my neighbor's property, as well as be able to see what's going on in the corner of my house at nighttime. Had no idea that there was any kind of ordinance against me even cutting my tree. Uh, once I came home and saw the notice posted, I reached out to the young lady, explained to her my situation, 
um, how I try to maintain everything around there because I am responsible for my mom on a fixed income and if I let it get out of hand, I can't afford to get it cut. So basically, I was just trying to maintain, like I said, I had no idea that there was any kind of rule against trimming your tree or cutting your tree. And I explained to her I definitely could not afford to pay $1,000. Um, so she said that um, she could reduce it to two fifty, dollars and I explained to her I just started working, and I'm not in a position to pay anything. Um, I had to get things together to pay the yard man to trim the tree initially. So I asked her what the remedy could be, and the remedy was for me to come here and speak to you. Um, I did go to a neighborhood meeting and spoke with um, one of the code enforcement people there, and she told me to come here, and that as long as this tree, you know, showed signs that it was not dead from me cutting it, things should be fine. Um, the tree has started to grow back, as you see. Um, it's fine. There's nothing wrong with it. Just like I said, I was just trying to keep it from getting out of hand because it's the type of tree that does that. A magistrate, just to clarify, um, with with in reference to that thousand dollars, it's it's the standard verbiage in the notice of violation. So I, that thing, that's what she's referring to. I did advise her though; it's not a thousand dollars, but it does state that in the notice of violation that the city could ask for up to a thousand dollars. That's the statutory maximum. Yes. Is there a minimum uh, by city code that has to be imposed if a finding of violation is made? Or is that within my discretion? While she's looking at that, so my understanding is it's not um, you're allowed to trim and maintain trees, but you can't do that to, to the point where that's yeah, I, I understand that now, so but I had no idea to maintain those trees, but um, but that 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 doing it that way does violate the city's code. And, and I will say, and I can just from looking at the pictures, it's very obvious to me that you do a good job of taking care of your property. Yeah. Looks, Thank you. Looks, um, Thank you. It's very nice. So, so I, I hear what you're saying. I don't believe there is. No, no mandatory minimum. It's the maximum is a thousand, and you're recommending two fifty. Um, the city is not opposed to um, a one-time fine of $100. Um, I can say, like, her house is one of the um, most beautiful homes on that oh, street. No, the, like, the uh, yeah, I, as you can see, like, it's well-maintained. Like, that's the only issue um, as far as the years I've been in code enforcement. I've actually spoken to her once before. Um, the property had just gravel, and she did replace the grass, so... Um, there aren't any other issues, so this actually it wasn't gravel. I um, it was mulch, okay. and I had no idea there was a city ordinance against mulch. It was during a time when we were having a drought, and we were not allowed to water our grass. So I replaced the grass with <laughs> with um, mulch, but I put plants. It basically looked like a California home because you know there's not much grass there so that's what I did in the attempt to alleviate being fine for watering my grass but that was a problem so um, that I did not realize again so I had to remove all of that mulch and put grass down and that's what I did um, and then like I said it, I don't know it's just like so many things around my house that I feel like could be focused on more so than, you know. But I understand that I wasn't supposed to do it now, like I said, but I had no idea it was even something that was a problem. All right, and, and I, I appreciate, and I, and I, like I said, I, I hear what you're saying. Is there anything else on behalf of the city? In no, this case? that's okay, it. Okay, the city's evidentiary case file with the documents that were testified about and that are uh, that were, um, also listed by the city attorney that's all made part of the record in this case. Um, city has proper notice, respondent is present. Uh, based on the testimony and the evidence, I do find that uh, 
uh, there has been a violation of City Code 94446-2B3 re uh, regarding prohibited hat racking. Um, but based on everything, and I've heard the city's recommendation, um, I'm just going to impose a $50 fine payable okay. within 60 days. Um, because, I, like I said, I, I, it's very clear to me that, that you're conscientious about how, how you take care of your property. Um, but, yeah, hat racking is, is not a good thing. Um, so $50 within 60 days, but you don't want it to happen again because then you could be found to be a repeat violator. And then okay. the, the fines really can, can get painful. So we don't want that to happen. Um, and my suggestion is if you don't want that tree there, there may be alternatives that you can look no, at. No, I definitely want the tree there. Oh, okay. I planted the tree. Okay. I mean, I planted it like five, six years ago as a baby. Grass. Yeah, and that's where it is in six yeah. years. Well, I know. I, so, love, I have one too, and they grow. You yeah. can stand there and watch them grow. So, yeah, so but there are ways to trim them properly and maintain them properly, so make sure that, that uh, going forward that that's what you do. I definitely will let my yard man know what he did, and um, so, yeah. All right. Thank you very much for coming. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Next case number one four ten Franklin Road CE two two zero one zero two nine eight. Do we have any uh, additional respondents in the room? Anybody else? Doesn't look like it. All right. Good morning. Good morning. Joseph Oliva, Code Enforcement Officer for the City of West Palm Beach. This property was cited on 124-2022. Service was accomplished by certified mail sent on 125-2022. Certified mail was uh, returned on 216-2022. In addition, both the property and City Hall were posted on 126-2022 along with the affidavit of posting which was signed by me, turned over to clerical for processing. I have not been in contact with the owner of the property. This property was cited for, and I observed myself from the sidewalk of the front of the house, 18-106-B, which is excessive overgrowth, 18-106A, trash and debris, 18-106K, landscape maintenance, 74 34-A-1-J, um, garbage can placement, 78-94-C, swale, which is overgrown, and 94-71-C, which is outdoor storage. As of this morning, the property has not, well, as of this morning, the property has come into compliance with 18-106B, the excessive overgrowth, 18-106K, which is the landscape maintenance, and 74-94-C, which is the overgrowth on the swale. It has not come into compliance with 18-106A, um, the trash and debris, 74-34-A-1-J, which is garbage can placement, and 94-71-C, which is outdoor storage. Um, therefore, the city is asking for an additional 20 days for them to come into compliance. If they do not come into compliance, then the city is asking for $50 a day until compliance is achieved. Officer Oliva, very quickly, um, did you also send regular mail? Yes. And we've been seeing some photos on the screen with respect to the trash and debris. Um, what are you referring to? Was that uh, in the carport area? It's the big pile area that's on the driveway there, yeah. And with respect to um, the garbage can, you were seeing that? Right there, along with all that big trash. Okay, that's at the side of the house? No, it's right in the front, right there. Okay, and you're referring to a photo that's up right now that shows it um, on the wall. Yes. On the wall of the house. And with respect to the outdoor storage, what were you referring to? The 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 uh, the, the pallet that's out there, and um, I think there's like a bucket or something like that. Yeah, there's a bucket out there that's. Um, Right behind the inside the um, the yellow bins. Okay. Special magistrate, the city would like to submit 
as evidence a copy of the notice of violations, certified mailing documents, affidavit of posting, and the photographs that are in the file that have been also testified to. Is there anybody here on behalf of the respondent? There is not. The city does, though, have proper notice with the certified mail and the posting. The city's request for uh, the record uh, documents is granted. Uh, based on the testimony and the evidence, I will find that property remains in violation of city code sections 18106A, 7434 a one j and 9471C, but has complied with the other code sections that were originally cited. I'll accept the city's recommendation and allow 20 additional days for the outstanding violations to be complied. After that, daily fines of $50 per day will be assessed until compliance is achieved. Thank you. Sure. Number two is complied, 832 Bunker Road, CE 22020043. Number four is complied, 639 39th Street, CE 22010312. Number five is complied, 233 Winona Place, CE 21110016. Number seven, 2204 Dock Street, CE 21120132. Donald Williams, Code Enforcement. Property 2204 Dock Street was cited on December 11th of 21. It was cited for 18-106L, which is landscape requirements. Certified mail was sent on 21422. The property was posted 222 of 22. I haven't had have contact with the owner of the property. Uh, as of today, yesterday, it was not complying. So I'm asking an additional 14 days to comply or $50 per day after that. Officer Williams, did you also send regular mail? Yes. Did you also post City Hall? Yes, posted on uh, 222 of 22. And did you complete an affidavit of posting? I did, yes. And what were your observations about um, the status of the landscape that you felt? Uh, on the front of the property, on the photo, it depicts a area which is about eight by 12, eight by, well, Longer than that, by eight by twenty of mulch and no grass, no landscaping. Special magistrate, the city would like to submit as evidence the copy of the notice of violation, certified mailing documents, affidavit of posting, and the photos in support. Um, anybody here on behalf of the respondent? However, the city has proper notice. Um, the documents in the city's file um, are uh, hereby made part of the record. Um, Eighteen. Tell me. Um, I'm trying to look at the code section on this one. One hundred six L. that and I saw the photograph but what, what actually is that a, is it just dirt or was it it's mulch they have some black mulch in there at one point so that's um Mulch is not listed as one of the. <laughs> no, it has to be planted material. Okay. Um, based on the testimony and the evidence, I will find the property remains in violation. As cited, I will uh, accept the city's recommendation, allow an additional 14 days for compliance. After that, daily fines of $50 per day will be assessed until compliance is achieved. Number 8952 York Street, CE 22010344. Don Williams, Code Enforcement, uh, 952 York Street was cited on January 26th of 22. Certified mail sent on February 14th of 22. The property and City Hall was posted February 22 
of 22. The violations were 94487B1, prohibited vehicle, and 94482-A, unpaved parking. Uh, as of yesterday, the unpaved parking is a transit violation. It comes and goes. So I'm going to ask for a founding in effect on the unpaid parking. Uh, but on the uh, prohibited vehicle, I want to give them an additional 10 days to comply that violation or $100 a day after that. No contact with the owners of the property. And that is it. Officer Williams, did you send regular mail? Yes, regular mail. Did you complete an affidavit of posting? Yes. And can you describe um, your observation about what the prohibited vehicle is? Yeah, there's a white truck or uh, commercial vehicle in the driveway of that property. And, and, some, and also that black uh, SUV is parked on unpaved surface. Thank you. Special Magistrate, the city would like to submit as evidence um, the documents in the file, including but not limited to notice of violations, certified mailing documents, affidavit of posting, and the photographs. Thank you. Uh, the city has proper notice, even though the respondent is not present. The city's request for the documents uh, specified to be made part of the record is granted. Um, based on the testimony and the evidence, I do find the property remains in violation as cited. I'll accept the city's recommendation, allow 10 days for compliance. After that, daily fines of $100 per day until compliance is ended. If, um, the uh, unpaid parking will be a fine in effect because it's a transit. It comes and goes. Say that again. The unpaid parking portion, we want to make that a fine in effect on that portion. How much? Just a fine in effect on the unpaid oh, parking because it comes and goes as a transit uh, violation. Thank you for clarifying All right. that. So um, for 94482A, the property was in violation, but it came into compliance, but not within the time frame specified in the notice. Uh, the, the 10 days and $100 a day will apply to city code 94487B1. Yes, thank, thank you. you. Number nine is complied, 4301 Pinewood Avenue, CE 22010316. Number 10 is complied, 1031 22nd Street, CE 22020220. Number 11 is complied, 725 58th Street, CE 21120047. Number 12, 3900 Broadway, CE 21120158. Cedar West Beach Code Compliance, Robert Watkins. Uh, this property was cited December the 14th. Certified mail was sent December the 15th. Certified mail was returned. City Hall was posted December the 15th. This property was cited for 100, well, 105.1, which is uh, unpermitted work. 110, FBC required inspections. 18100, boards on windows, safe egress. And 18-105J, which is non-residential paint. Uh, remain, uh, no violations have come into compliance. I've spoke with Ms. Clark, who's in charge of running the church uh, and all the, uh, the things that are going on there with getting the supplies and the paint and everything of that nature. Uh, we've come up to a conclusion uh, that she will need 90 days to complete all the work. She does have a permit for uh, windows and doors in right now with the city. Uh, she has already have it set up to get inspections for the windows and doors, well, the doors that have been replaced already without a permit. Officer Watkins, did you send by regular mail? A uh, regular mail was sent. Um, this is a pickup from code officer uh, Christopher Thompson that was uh, had this case, and I, I picked it up from him. So I did contest. I do contest to the uh, the certified mail, but uh, going off the notes that are in the system, the certified mail was sent but returned, and it was mailed as well. Okay. And um, I wasn't able to look at the photos. Was there a photograph or can you testify that the property was posted? Yes, ma'am, it was posted. Okay. And do you know whether there is an affidavit of posting in the file? Yes, there is. And was that um, signed by you or by Mr. Thompson? That was signed by Mr. Thompson. Okay. And with regard to your contact, your con you, excuse me, you had the contact with Ms. Clark at the, the church? Yes, I, I did on, uh, that would be the 27th. Okay, so oh, the 20th, sorry, the 20th. So she is aware of which windows and doors. Yes, we uh, spoke about it. We I actually walked around the building, so she knew exactly which ones needed to be repaired and, and replaced. 
when you were at the property, did you also observe the um, alleged paint violation? Yes, and I also took pictures in a different folder with, yeah, uh, the, yes, I did, and I also took pictures with the folder uh, labeled the 28th, which is the one that I did. Okay, and did you discuss with Ms. Clark um, what she needed to do to fix the painting? Absolutely. And is the painting the entire church, or is it just some portions? No, she's going to have the whole entire church painted. That's why she needed the time, as well as pressure wash. It's a pretty big church. It takes up a block and a half, so... So I want to take some time. Thank you. Special Magistrate, the city would like to submit um, the file documents, including but not limited to the notice of violation, the certified mailing documents, the affidavit of posting, the photographs um, in support of the testimony. Okay. The city has proper notice, uh, even though the respondent is not present. Um, the city's request for the documents to be uh, made part of the file is granted. Are the documents to be made part of the record that are in the file is granted. Um, did you have a recommendation on yep. a daily fine as heard 90 days? Yep. Yes, I was going to get after she did her thing. But yeah, the city is requesting 90 days or $150 per day after. on the testimony and the evidence I do find the property remains in violation as cited although you said that they have gotten some of the permits they needed so they're well she's applied for them and they already set up for inspections okay. they just haven't done yet but it's quite a bit of, of work and I know the permits are taking a while all right but at least they are, are moving forward mm -hmm. all right I will accept the city's recommendation to require uh, compliance no later than 90 days after that daily fines of $150 per day are assessed until compliance is achieved mm -hmm. thank you Number 16 is complied, 1007 Elmeria Road, CE 22010291. Number 17, 3827 Heat Circle North, CE 22010369. Good morning, City of West Palm Beach Code Compliance Officer Paul McFarland. On January 26th, the property at 3827 Heat Circle North was cited for excessive growth, unsecured vacant property, Sell, swales overgrown, roof in need of repair, damage to roof, clean and sanitary, trash found on property, and outdoor storage, tire and vehicle seat being stored on property. The property was posted as well as City Hall uh, affidavit of posting was signed and attached to case on February 3rd, 2022. Certified mail and regular mail went out January 27th. Certified mail was received and signed for on February 1st, 2022, as attached to the case. <clears throat> as of as of February 28th, as depicted in my photos, the property is still out of compliance with the excessive growth. The property has since come into compliance with the securing of vacant property. The side door leading to the garage is now secure. The swale is still overgrown. The roof is still damaged in need of repair. Um, it's been missing some roofing tiles and part of the roof is starting to warp. The clean and sanitary still remains. There's still trash and debris found on this property. However, the outdoor storage has since come to compliance. Um, I have not made any contact with the owner, SFR 2012-1 Florida LLC. With that being said, city's recommending 30 days to come to compliance or $100 a day until compliance is achieved. Special Magistrate, the city would like to submit a copy of the documents in the file, including but not limited to the notice of violation, the certified mailing documentation, the affidavit of posting, 
and the photographs which um, um, document the observations of the officer. Right, the documents are accepted into the record. The city has proper notice, even though the respondent is not present. Based on the testimony and the evidence, I find that the property has complied with 18214B regarding securing the vacant property and 9471C regarding outside storage, but remains in violation of the other code sections that were cited in the notice. I will accept the city's recommendation in this case require compliance no later than 30 days from today. After that, daily fines of $100 per day will be assessed until compliance is achieved. Number 185210 Fox Hall Drive South, CE2202015. Good morning, City of West Palm Beach Code Compliance Officer Paul McFarland. On February 1st, the property at 5210 Fox Hall Drive South was cited for an operative vehicle. Vehicle being stored on property without proper tag, trash can placement, and unpaved parking. The property, as well as City Hall, was posted. Affidavit signed for, as depicted in the photos and the attachments in the case on February 4th. Certified, certified mail and regular mail was sent out February 2nd, 2022. Certified mail was signed for February 4th, 2022. Um, as of February 25th, uh, I made a last ditch effort to make contact with Timothy L. Wilson, owner of the property. Upon approaching door to ring doorbell and knock, I did observe that the property was still out of compliance with the inoperative vehicle. No tag found on vehicle. Trash can still being stored out in front of garage and the property has since come into compliance with the unpaved parking. I was un unsuccessful with my attempt to make contact with the property owner. With that being said, city's recommending 15 days to come into compliance or $50 a day until compliance is achieved. Okay. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Magistrate, the city would like to submit its evidence, a copy of the file documents including but not limited to the notice of violation, the certified mailing documents, affidavit of posting, and the photographs which um, are in the file and support the observations of the officer. If the city's request is granted. Those documents are made part of the record. The city has proper notice even though the respondent is not present. Based on the testimony and the evidence, I do find the property remains in violation. As cited, I will allow 15 additional days for compliance. After that, daily fines of $50 per day will be assessed until compliance is achieved. Thank you. Yes, sir. Number 19242 North Ware Drive, CE2201026. Good morning. Officer William, City of West Palm Beach Code Enforcement. Uh, the property at 242 North Ware Drive was cited on January 4th, 2022. Uh, the certified mail was sent out January 6th, 2022. That was received January 10th, 2022. The property as well as City Hall was posted on January 28th, 2022, as well as the affidavit of uh, posting submitted on that day. Um, they were originally cited for 18162A for rental license violation, 22-32-A for a certificate of use that's required. Um, 7434A1J for the garbage can being in view of the uh, public and 94446C-3 for the tree abuse. Uh, they removed the tree at the property. I've had contact with the owners. Uh, they do realize that uh, all of the violations that were uh, witnessed, um, they're working to get everything as far as the rental license and COU, they're working to get that applied for. Uh, they did tell me that they had some tenants that were uh, in the home that have since moved out. They uh, have tenants that should be moving in within the next few weeks, and they're working to get that uh, taken care of. Um, as of this morning, the garbage can placement has been complied. Uh, everything else, uh, all the other violations are still current at the property. 
Uh, so for the rental li uh, violation, rental license violation, and the certificate of use, the city's asking for 15 additional days uh, to bring that into compliance or $150 a day fine thereafter. And for the uh, tree abuse, the re uh, tree that was removed, the city's requesting a one-time fine of $250. Mr. Williams was regular mail also sent. Yes, ma'am. And just to be clear, there was just one tree um, in those photos that was abused or cut down? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Special Magistrate, the city would like to submit a copy of the file documents, including but not limited to the notice of violation, certified mailing, affidavit of posting, photographs that um, uh, support the observations of the officer and um, a <coughs> I'm sorry officer Williams did you say that they did submit an application for rental license or they're going they're to in the process of submitting that application Very good. that's all okay so uh, rental license and certificate of use are in process yes sir Garbage can placement is still a violation? No, so that's been complied. Okay. Uh, question about the tree removal. Is that with the legislation that passed last year, is, is that? I thought we couldn't require permits for tree removal. Is there any way? Special Magistrate, I would actually have to go back and, and take a look at that. Um. Well, we could hold that um, table. We could table that and and bring that one back at the next hearing. If I enter an order on the uh, rental license and certificate of use, can because uh, I'd like to go ahead and do that today, but can we, can we bifurcate it that way? Yes. Okay. Um, City has proper notice. The uh, documents will be made part of the um, city's uh, case file with the documents um, associated with this case is made part of the file. Uh, based on the testimony and the evidence, I do find the property remains in violation of city code sections 18162A, 2232A. I will um, allow 15 days for compliance on those. After that, daily fines of $150 per day will be assessed until compliance is achieved. Find the property has complied with section 7434A1J regarding garbage can placement. Um, on on 94446.2C3, um, I will find that uh, the tree was removed without a permit. Uh, and and this way, if, if there's not a preemption issue, I'm happy to assess the $250 fine. Just. Um, So I, I will make that finding subject to um, confirmation by the city attorney that, that uh, a permit is required for the tree removal based on the current status of state law. Okay. Thank you. Number 2319, Elaine Circle West, CE 22010033. Officer William, City of West Palm Beach Code Enforcement. The property at 319 Elaine Circle West was cited on January 4th, 2022. Certified mail was sent out uh, January 6, 2022, as well as regular mail. Uh, the certified mail was returned on February 11, 2022. Uh, the property, as well as City Hall, was posted on January 28, 2022, as well as an affidavit of posting uh, submitted on that date. Uh, to date, I've had no contact with the owner. Uh, they were cited for 94-47-B-1 uh, for the uh, box truck that was observed parked in the uh, driveway of the property as well as 9471-C for the outdoor uh, storage that's stored in the uh, in front of the home and in the front lawn of the home there. Uh, as of this morning, all violations are still uh, at the property. Uh, the city is requesting for 15 additional days to bring the property into compliance or $150 a day fine thereafter. 150 Yes, sir. Okay. I just, I missed the picture of the box truck. I just wanted to see that. That's probably part of it right there. Uh, there we go. 
Okay. Thank you. Special Magistrate, the city would like to submit as evidence um, documents from the file, including but not limited to the notice of violation, affidavit of posting, certified mailing documents, and the photographs um, which attest to the officer's observations. All right, thank you. The, that uh, request is granted. Those documents are all part of the record. The city has proper notice even though the respondent is not present. Based on the testimony and the evidence, I find the property remains in violation as cited. I will accept the city's recommendation, allow an additional 15 days for compliance after that daily fines of $150 per day will be assessed until compliance is achieved. Number 21879 West Executive Center Drive, CE 22020059. Officer Williams, City of West Palm Beach Code Enforcement. Uh, this, the property at 879 West Executive Center Drive was originally cited February 3rd, 2022. Uh, certified mail as, as well as regular mail was sent out February 4th, 2022. The certified mail was received February 7th, 2022. The property as well as City Hall was posted on February 9th, 2022, and an affidavit of posting was submitted that day as well. I've had contact with the owner who just purchased the property and is trying to get uh, these violations cleared to the best of his ability. Uh, they were cited for 18-106I for litter and trash and debris uh, that were scattered throughout the entire property, 18-106A uh, for clean and sanitary conditions, 18-106E for a bee infestation that they have. Uh, the owner said that he has contacted an exterminator and they're just waiting for them to come out to take a look at that. 18-214B for uh, to secure the vacant property. Uh, there are vagrants that have moved in, broken windows, uh, broken down the door. <laughs> they moved in mattresses, couches, the whole nine, and they're you know living there. And then 18-265 for a boarding certificate that's needed. Um, they have had a crew come out and board the windows. Some of the uh, windows that were where the windows had been broken, um, they are waiting for um, another contractor to come out to board the rest of the windows and uh, different openings that are there at the property. Um, as of this morning, all violations are still uh, present at the property. Uh, so the owner as well as the city is requesting 15 additional days to bring the property into compliance or a $150 a day fine uh, thereafter. Um, have the bees, are they disturbing neighboring properties? Is it pretty much contained? No, it's pretty much just contained there. They're like inside the walls um, there. Um, and he, they, he's more so concerned about the vagrants that are living inside. He didn't want them to be, you know, uh, disturbed by the bees, so he's working diligently to get it taken care of. Unfortunately, trespass warnings don't work with bees. <laughs> All right, did you have any? Thank you. Um, Special Magistrate, the city would like to submit as evidence a copy of the uh, documents in the file, including but not limited to the notice of violation, certified mailing documents, affidavit of posting, and the photographs which document the officer's ob observations. Okay, thank you. The, uh, that request is granted. The uh, city's <coughs> this file with the documents um, related to this case is made part of the record. The city has proper notice, even though the respondent is not present. Based on the testimony and the evidence, I will find the property remains in violation as cited. I will accept the city's recommendation and require compliance within 15 days after that. Daily fines of $150 per day will be assessed until compliance is achieved. Thank you. Number 22-516 Hampton Road, CE 22010174. Good morning, Officer Levine, City of West Palm Beach Code. This property was cited for failure to obtain a rental license, certificate of use, and evidence of engaging in a business which is advertising for a vacation rental. Service was accomplished by certified mail, which was signed for on 121 2022 I've had no contact with the property owner, and there are no applications in the system for a license. The city is requesting 30 days to come into compliance or $200 a day thereafter. How much? 30 days to come into compliance or $200 a day thereafter. Officer Levine, was yes, regular mail sent? Was regular mail sent? Yes. Was the property and 
City Hall posted? No, City Hall and property was not posted because we, we got a uh, signed certified mail copy in the system. Was an affidavit of posting completed? No. And we're seeing right now on the screen, is that the advertisement that you identified? Yes. This particular property, and this property is 516 Hampton Road? Yes, ma'am. Special Magistrate, um, the city would like to submit as evidence um, a copy of the documentary file, including but not limited to the notice of violation, the certified mail document evidencing signature, um, photographs that are in the file, as well as a copy of the um, rental advertisement. Okay, um, city's request um, is granted the documents in the city's uh, file are um, part of the record in this case. The city has proper notice even though the respondent is not present. Based on the testimony and the evidence, I do find the property remains in violation as cited. I will accept the city's recommendation, allow 30 days to comply. After that, daily fines of $200 per day will be assessed until compliance is achieved. Thank you. Number 23915 3rd Street, CE 2201-0176. This property was cited for failure to obtain a rental license and certificate of use. It was also cited for uh, um, evidence of engaging in a business, which is advertising for a vacation rental. Service was accomplished by certified mail, which was signed for on 121 20 22. I've had no contact with the property owner, and there isn't an um, active application in the system. Regular mail was also sent out on this violation, too. City's so requesting 30 days to come into compliance or $200 a day thereafter. Officer Levine, I apologize as I was um, speaking with uh, Mr. Joyce. Um, was the property in City Hall posted? No, there were no posting. Certified mail was signed, uh, certified mail was signed for on 1-21-2022. Okay. And I didn't hear um, did you say that a application is in the file? No, there's no application in the system and I've had no contact with the property owner. And we're seeing um, on the screen, we just saw on the screen, a copy of a rental advertisement. Um, is that what you saw in relation to 915 Third Street? Yes, ma'am. Special Magistrate, the city would like to submit as evidence a copy of the documentary file, including but not limited to the notice of violation the certified mailing, uh, signature documents, um, photos, as well as the rental advertisement. All right, that is request is granted. The, city's, uh, the documents in the city's file are made part of the record. The city has proper notice even though the respondent is not present. Based on the testimony and the evidence, I find the property remains in violation as cited. I will accept the city's recommendation, allow 30 additional days to comply. After that, daily fines of $200 per day are assessed until compliance is achieved. Number 24 is complied, 1412 Okeechobee Road, number 2, CE 2201-0177. Number 25 is rescheduled, 245 Greenwood Drive, CE 2201-0276. Number 26, 815 Omar Road, CE 2201-0293. Michael Williams, Code Enforcement Officer, City of West Palm Beach. Um, property 815 uh, Omar Road was cited on 12422. Uh, service was uh, accomplished by certified mail that was sent on 12522. Uh, both the property and City Hall were posted on 12522. Um, I have had some contact with the um, person that uh, indicated via email that they are the owner of the property. Um, property was cited for 18106G, painting of the structure, 18106B, excessive growth, 34-102-A, um, junk uh, and abandoned vehicle maintained on the property, and 74-34-A-1-J, garbage can placement. Um, as of last evening, um, the following was noted with regard to the uh, the state of the violations. Uh, 18106G uh, still remains. 18106B, excessive growth has been complied. 
uh, 34-102-A. Um, there is a vehicle um, that remains on the property that has an expired license plate um, um, on the vehicle. Um, I did speak to the tenant uh, there at the property. Uh, the tenant came out when I came by, indicated that they're in process of perhaps moving on in light of the fact that there's a new owner. Um, she stated that she's going to need some additional time to get the um, get a current uh, sticker for the vehicle. But I did uh, state to her that um, my intentions are to ask for 30 additional days for the owner to come into compliance uh, any, at any rate with, uh, with regard to the painting. 74-34-A-1-J um, garbage can placement also was resolved. Um, so uh, with that said, the only two things that uh, remain are 18106G, uh, the painting, and 34-102-A, the vehicle that uh, remains on the property with an expired license plate. Um, again, the city's action asking for 30 additional days in order to comply or fine of $50 per day be imposed. Officer Williams, did you also send by regular mail? Say again, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, did you also send the notice by regular mail? Yes, we did. And did you complete an affidavit of posting? Yes, I did. With regard to the paint, could you tell us a little bit more about your observations of um, where on the property, I mean, yeah, where on the street? Actually, actually the, the, the front and the sides um, from my vantage point is uh, what I noted was uh, faded, dirty, peeling. And with respect to the vehicle, is it the white one or the gray yeah, one? Yeah, it's, it's the white vehicle. Um, there's also photos of the expired license plate that's on the vehicle. Special Magistrate, the city would like to submit a copy of the documentary file, including but not limited to the notice of violation, the certified mailing documents, the affidavit of posting, photographs that um, Officer Williams uh, has also testified to, as well as he uh, referenced an email um, that um, has been received from the owner um, or the tenant. Okay. Thank you. Um, that request is granted. The documents in the city's uh, case file for this matter are made part of the record uh, as testified to and specified uh, by the city attorney. Um, based on the testimony and the evidence, I find the property remains in violation with the exception of 18106B, excessive growth, which uh, complied. Um, the other ones are all still in violation, right, Mr. Williams? Say again, I'm sorry. The, other, the only complied is the excessive growth. The excessive growth complied and also the garbage can placement. The garbage they, can did. Right, they removed that from the front of the property. All right, so then uh, what's remaining is paint and junk and abandoned vehicles. I'll accept the city's recommendation um, for those. I'll allow an additional 30 days to comply. After that, daily fines of $150 per day are assessed until compliance is achieved. Number 27 is complied, 313 Clamata Street, CE 22020063. Number 28 is complied, 1331 Longwood Street, CE 22020077. Number 29, 2458 South Australian Avenue, CE 22020194. Michael Williams, Code Enforcement Officer, City of West Palm Beach. Uh, property 2458 South Australian Avenue was uh, cited on 12422. Uh, service was accomplished by certified mail sent on 21422. Uh, the property as well as City Hall was posted on 21522. Um, I have been in contact with the owners um, who are in New Jersey. Um, we actually spoke over the phone and also we had been cor corresponding back and forth um, uh, with some emails. Um, it's, a, it's a vacant lot. They've actually been doing um, a really good job over the recent years in terms of maintaining it uh, for, for the most part. Um, in an area uh, that's uh, a cul-de-sac, which is pictured there. A lot of Uber drivers and um, um, toss trash there, you know, as they're waiting, you know, for calls and, and stuff like that. So, um, but there was a portion of the grass um, that their maintenance guy had been neglecting, but uh, he did get out and cut it and clean it. And 
um, so that so that issue had been taken care of. Um, but the property was cited for um, 18106 uh, B excessive growth, uh, as I said, which was complied by the owner 18106 A uh, clean and sanitary, which was also complied by the owner, although they did not cause the violation. Um, and 94-302-A-4, uh, there are various sections of the fence that are in disrepair um, that it looks like have been run over by, I don't know, trucks or uh, what have you. Um, so uh, the city would like to give the owner 45 additional days in order to comply with the uh, maintenance of the down fencing or fine of $50 per day be imposed. Officer Williams, did you also send by regular mail? Yes, I did. And did you complete an affidavit of posting? Yes, I did. And um, Special Magistrate, the city would like to submit a copy of the documentary file, including but not limited to the notice of violation, the certified mail documents, the affidavit of posting, the photographs that um, um, are in the file and which document the observations of the um, officer, as well as a copy of the email correspondence um, that the officer has had with uh, the owner and or representative of the property. My request is granted. The city's documents are made part of the record. The city has proper notice, even though the respondent is not present. Based on the testimony and the evidence, I do find the property remains in violation as cited, except for 18106B, which complied. Accept the city's recommendation allow an additional 45 days for the remaining violations to comply after that daily fines of $50 per day are assessed until compliance is achieved. Thank you. Number 30, 1041 45th Street, CE 22010290. Natalie Clark, City of West Palm Beach Code Compliance. 1041 45th Street was cited on January 24th of 2022. The property and city hall were posted on January 27th of 2022. Certified mail and regular mail was sent on January 27th of 2022. Certified mail was returned. The property was cited for non-residential exterior paint, clean and sanitary, excessive growth, an operative vehicle, hurricane hazard, Removal of um, obsolete sign. The property has since complied with the inoperative vehicle. I've had no contact with the property owner. The city for code sections 18106A, which is the clean and sanitary, 18106B, the excessive growth, 744C1, the hurricane hazard, the city is asking for an additional 20 days or $100 per day until compliance is achieved. For 18105J, which is the non-residential paint, the city is asking for an additional 60 days or $100 per day until compliance is achieved. So the property has since, um, the grass has since been cut. However, the overgrowth along the property line, as you can see in the photos, pretty much covers the parking signs um, that needs to be trimmed as well and the dead vegetations need to be removed, the hanging ones and also the ones um, just on the ground. Officer Clark, did you also prepare an affidavit of posting? Yes, I did. With regard to the, um, the painting, could you just describe very uh, briefly? Yes. So the um, exterior paint, it's not the entire building, it's sections as um, you'll see in the photographs. There are multiple discolored um, areas that needs to be addressed and you can see um, the discoloration in the photos. Could you also um, tell us more about your observations about the signage? Okay, there's, um, there's a separate folder for the obsolete. Um, So as depicted in that photo, it seems like um, something ran into the sign. So most of it is in the actual parking lot. The sign just needs to be removed. All that debris needs to be removed and the sign removed if it's um, um, damaged. Thank you, Special Magistrate. The city would like to submit 
as evidence a copy of the documentary file, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, including but not limited to the notice of violation, the certified mailing documents, the affidavit of posting, all the photographs that are in the file and that have also been testified to. All right, uh, city's request to um, include all of the documents in the city's file as part of the record is granted. Uh, the inoperative vehicle is the only one that's complied, is that correct? correct? Okay. Uh, based on the testimony and the evidence, then I do find the property remains in violation as cited with the exception of 34102B, which has complied. Um, did I say proper notice? I do find proper notice if, if I didn't already say that. I, um, I will accept the city's recommendation in this case, allow 20 additional days to cure the outstanding violations. After that, daily fines of $100 per day will be assessed until compliance is achieved. Is the paint for 60 the paint, days? I'm sorry, the paint is 60 days. And Officer Clark, is the sign 20 oh, days? Sorry, I, I Yes, I the removal the of the sign. Yes, 60 days to comply, 18105J and $100 per day if that deadline is not complied as well. Number 31, 3700 Australian Court, CE 22010398. Natalie Clark, City of West Palm Beach Code Compliance, 3700 Australian Court, was cited on January 27th of 2022. The property in City Hall were posted on February 1st of 2022. And certified mail and regular mail was sent on January 28th of 2022. Certified mail was signed COVID-19. The property was cited for 105.1, failure to secure a building permit for a tiki hut that was erected in the rear of the property. 110.1, which is a required inspection for the tiki hut. The property was cited for 18-162A, which is the residential um, application for um, the rental tax, 2232A, which is the certificate of use, 34102B, which is the inoperative vehicle. There's a few vehicles there with expired tags, 744C4, which is the obstruction of the right-of-way, and that's for the vegetation, I'm sorry, um, yes, that's for the vegetation that's actually um, blocking the sidewalk. It was also cited for 781 obstruction of right of way as well, and that's for the boat trailer that's blocking the sidewalk. 82151, which is the evidence of the business engaged, evidence of property engaging in a business, it's being used as uh, Airbnb. And I have spoken to um, several of the um, visitors, um, they were having a wedding. So the visitor did confirm that it was being used as an Airbnb and they were there for several days. It was also cited for 94487B5, which is screening of um, restricted vehicle. That would have been the boat that's um, parked in the driveway. I have had contact with the property owner. All the violations have complied with the exception of 105.1 and 110.1. Um, however, an application was submitted for the permit. Um, the city is requesting an additional 60 days or $100 per day until compliance is achieved. Officer Clark, did you also prepare an affidavit of posting? Yes. Um, Special Magistrate, the city would like to submit as evidence a copy of the documentary file, including but not limited to the notice of violation, the certified mailing documents, the affidavit of posting, all photographs and a copy of the permit application. All right, the city's uh, documents contained in the uh, in the city's file are made part of the record. Uh, I do find proper notice, even though the respondent is not present, with the assigned certified mail. Based on the testimony and the evidence, I do find property has complied um, with all code sections cited in the notice. Uh, except 105.1 and 110.1. I had a question, is there, on, on this Tiki Hut, is there like electricity or? Yes. Okay, so it doesn't qualify as a Chicky Hut under the building no. department? No, so I did check with the building department and based on um, their review of the Tiki Hut, I was advised that only certain Native American tribes can apply for the Tiki Hut. Everyone else, it does require permit. Um, there are TVs installed outdoors, so it has electricity, so it does require a building permit. I'm pretty sure that, 
that excludes it from that exemption yes. as well if it has any kind of other utilities. Okay, just wanted to make sure. Um, then I do find the property remains in violation of 105.1 and 110.1. I'll accept the city's recommendation, allow 60 additional days to cure that violation after that daily fines of $100 per day are assessed until compliance is achieved. Number 33, 810 38th Street, CE 22020180. Natalie Clark, City of West Palm Beach Code Compliance, 810 38th Street was cited on February 10th of 2022. The property and city hall were posted on February 10th of 2022. Certified mail and regular mail was sent on February 10th of 2022. Certified mail was signed for. The property was cited for 34102B, which is um, the inoperative vehicle. It is that white um, vehicle in the parking lot. All four tires um, were flat. 7434A1J, which is the trash can being visible to the public. And 9470. 9471C, which is the outdoor storage, it's for all of the items that are being stored in the carport. I've had no contact with the property owner. The property has since complied with 34102B, which is the inoperative vehicle, and 7434A1J, which is the trash can. The only remaining violation is 9471C, which is the items being stored um, in the carport. The city is asking for an additional 15 days or $100 per day until compliance is achieved. Officer Clark, did you also prepare an affidavit of posting? Yes, I did. Special Magistrate, the city would like to submit a copy of the documentary file, including but not limited to the notice of violation, the certified mailing documents, the affidavit of posting, and all photographs. Okay, the city's, uh, the documents in the city's file are made part of the record for this case based on um, well, first of all, I do find proper notice, even though the respondent is not present. Based on the testimony and the evidence, I find the property remains in violation of city code 9471C, but has complied with the other code sections that were cited in the notice. I will allow 15 additional days to cure the outstanding violation after that daily fines of $100 per day are assessed until compliance is achieved. Thank you. Num number 34, 1352 Ninth Street, CE 21100186. Officer lost the West Palm Code Enforcement. Property certified mail was, return, which was returned to the city on 12422. Property was posted on 217-2022. I've had contact with the property owner. This property she has inherited from her father, which passed away earlier, I'm sorry, last year, late last year, and she has been battling COVID. And the property was cited for a roof, wall, and foundation replacement of rotten wood, which is the um, fascia, clean and sanitary condition, excessive growth, paint of the exterior of the home, litter, trash, and debris, animal uh, odor, foul odors from pets, uh, garbage can placement. Oh, I got that mixed in. Uh, Overgrowth and garbage and debris. Cleaning of easement, one half of easement. Uh, driveway in disrepair. And fence in disrepair. Unpaved parking and outdoor storage. She has asked for 90 more days to come into full compliance or $50 per day and she is still trying to recover from COVID. Everything's still outstanding? Everything is still outstanding. Officer Luster, did yep. you send the notice by regular mail? Yes, ma'am. Did you post City Hall? Both, Port Property and City Hall, 217-22. Did you complete an affidavit of posting? Yes, ma'am. Can you tell us a little bit more about your observations with well, regard to... Wait, Okay. In reference to the rotten wood that's around the fascia, the clean and sanitary conditions is basically the trash and garbage that's uh, thrown about the property. The excessive growth is the, pr 
the rear of the property, you can see on one side of the property how tall the, the rear of the backyard is itself. Uh, painting is the property itself. The pet odor I can describe for you, but I choose not to. Uh, <laughs> uh, the garbage can placement is always kept in the uh, open area and view of public, which is on the side of the house, west side of the house. And cleaning up one half of the easement is just abutting the property in the rear. The driveway is in just disrepair. It needs to be replaced. Uh, the driveway and the approach. And the fencing is the um, basically in disrepair. It needs the gate. Uh, and the outdoor storage is all of the other stuff, debris around the yard. Is the fencing the entire fencing or a particular Both side? sides, the wooden and the um, chain link. Both are in disrepair. Thank you. Special Magistrate, the city would like to submit as, um, uh, as evidence a copy of the documentary file, including but not limited to the notice of violation, the certified mailing documentation, the affidavit of posting, and um, all photographs. All right. Um, that request is granted. The city's uh, documents associated with this case are made part of the record. Uh, the city has proper notice with the posting following the return certified mail, even though the respondent is not present. Based on the testimony and the evidence, I find property remains in violation as cited. I will allow 90 additional days for compliance after that. Daily fines of $50 per day will be assessed until compliance is achieved. Thank you. Great. Do we want to continue with the remaining eight cases? or? Yeah, I was just looking at that. Um, yeah. Please. <laughs> <laughs> let's, uh, let's see if we can muscle through Miss uh, Luster's last few cases and get through the regular agenda. And then uh, we've only got a couple on the uh, 1130 agenda. Thank you. Okay, number 35, 1500 11th Street, CE 21110178. Officer Luster, West Palm Code. Certified mail was returned to us on 11-18-2021. Certified mail was signed COVID. Property was posted on 2-17-2022, also City Hall. Property was cited for cleaning on sanitary condition, cleaning of driveway and sidewalk, painting of home, uh, paint is peeling on the home in various areas around the entire property. This is also a repeat violation in regards to unpaved parking and parking in Swell Parkway, uh, tree obstructing the right of way, parking on Swell and Parkway, unpaved parking, and outdoor storage. Back to the only violation that is in full compliance is the um, overgrowth of obstructing the public right of way, which was a tree on the east side of the property overhanging the sidewalk. They have brought that into compliance. Regarding the repeat violation, that was case CE 19050594 back in 7-17-2019. And it was a finding of fact for unpaved parking and parking in Swell and Parkway. I have noticed four different incidents in regarding to that same violation as a repeat on 12-2-2021, 12-15-2021, uh, that was two incidents on that particular day, 12-15-2021, and 1-10-2022. I'm asking for $50 on each incident, and I'm also asking for the unpaved parking because they is transit. It comes back, complies, comes back. So I'm asking for a finding of fact on the unpaved parking. Other violations, I'm asking for 30 more days or $50 per day after. That's clean and sanitary condition, painting of the house, property, uh, and the outdoor storage. Tell me the, the time frame again. I was looking at the repeat when you said that. Uh, 30 days? 30? Yes, sir. And fifty dollars per day. Fifty. Yes, sir. Officer Luster, did you also send by regular mail? Yes, ma'am. And did you complete an affidavit of posting? Yes, ma'am. 
And with regard to the outdoor storage, was that um, property, tires, and coolers? Yes, ma'am. And Special Magistrate, I'd like to submit as evidence a copy of the documentary file, including but not limited to the notice of violation, the certified mailing documents, the affidavit of posting, and all photographs. Okay. City's request is granted. This uh, documents associated with this case contained in the city's files are made part of the record. Uh, with the uh, posting following the return certified mail, the city has proper notice. Um, Based on the testimony and the evidence, I do find property complied with 744C4 regarding the obstruction of the right of way. Pink. I find um, the unpaved parking was a violation, but it came into compliance, but not within the time specified in the notice, so that's a finding of fact. Correct. Uh, I find that the property remains in violation of all other code sections that were cited in the notice. Mm -hmm. I find that the parking in the swale violation, which is 86226, is a repeat violation mm -hmm. based on case 950594. Um, I uh, find that there were three specific three instances four. And what was the four? I have the second the 15th the, the second 10th. 15th was twice and then uh, January 10th oh, okay yeah. so there was those are the four instances that the property was in repeat violation I assess $50 fines for each of those four repeat violations for a total of $200 for the other violations I will require compliance no later than 30 days after that, daily fines of $50 per day until compliance is achieved. Thank you. That was the most complicated order of the day so far. Okay. You did great. For 37, 1481 7th Street, CE 21110235. Officer Lost of West Palm Code. Certified mail was signed COVID on 11 20 2021. 20, Property and City Hall was posted on 2 17 2021. 20, I've had contact with owner three to four times. All violations were as followed. For handrail, putting a handrail around deck above garage, clean and sanitary condition, um, certificate of use, junk and operable vehicles, inoperable vehicles, enclosed, must be in an enclosed area, and unpaved parking. The only outstanding violation is putting a handrail around the upper deck around the garage. He has applied for the permit on 12-2021, and he's did all the follow-up in regards to the permit as of January 5th, 2022. Once the permit is printed, that means he has received it. So once that happens, I will comply his case. So I'm asking for um, 30 more days because it's in review now for us to plan itself or $50 per day okay. or compliance if permit is printed. Yeah. Officer Luster, did you also send the notice by regular mail? Yes, ma'am. And did you complete an affidavit of posting? Yes, ma'am. Special Magistrate, the city would like to submit a copy of the documentary file including uh, but not limited to the notice of violation, certified mailing documents, affidavit of posting, photographs in support of the observations of violations, mm -hmm. and the permit application uh, that Officer Lester testified to. Thank you. Right. City's request regarding uh, the city's file is granted. Mm -hmm. Those are, are all made part of the record. With the certified mail uh, and the posting, the city has proper notice, even though the respondent is not present. Based on the testimony and the evidence, I will find the property has complied with all code sections cited in the notice of violation, except city code 1010.8 regarding the handrails. Um, for that violation, there is a permit that's been applied for. We'll allow 30 additional days for compliance, uh, meaning the permit being issued and uh, if there are, uh, if compliance is not achieved, daily fines of fifty dollars per day will be assessed until compliance is achieved. Thank you. Thank you. Thirty-eight, thirteen, fifty-five, Eighth Street, CE two one one two zero zero three five. Officer Luster, West Palm Code. Certified mail was COVID signed on twelve eight twenty twenty one. 
property in City Hall was posted on 2-17-2022. I have spoke with the owner of this property on numerous occasions. The property was cited for safe egress from window, uh, repairing of rotten wood, fascia, cleaning sanitary conditions around the property, overgrowth, cleaning up one half of easement, unpaved parking, and outdoor storage. All violations are in compliance except for egress of window. It it was a one it was a window unit in a single room window. There's only one window in this particular bedroom. They removed the AC, but they actually boarded the window. So I spoke to them yesterday, and they understand that they have to actually put the window in, and it has to be an operable window in that area. So I'm asking for 30 more days or $50 per day. And everything else complies. Everything else is in full compliance. Mr. Luster, did you send by regular mail as well? Yes, ma'am. Did you complete an affidavit of posting? Yes, ma'am. Special Magistrate, the city would like to submit a copy of the documentary file, including but not limited to the notice of violation, certified mailing documentation, affidavit of posting, and all photographs. City's request is granted. Those documents are made part of the record. City has proper notice for certified mail and posting, even though the respondent is not present. Based on the testimony and the evidence, I find the property remains in violation of City Code 18-100 regarding safe egress, but has complied with all other code sections cited in the notice. Um, I'll allow 30 additional days for compliance. After that, daily fines of $50 per day will be assessed until compliance is achieved. Thank you. Number 39 is complied. 1359 8th Street, CE 2112036. Number 40, 1532 6th Street, CE 2112059. Officer Luster, West Palm Code. Certified mail was signed by on COVID. 12-10-2021, property and city hall was posted on 12-17-2022. I've had no contact with this owner. The exterior of the home needs painting, clean and sanitary condition of driveway and sidewalk. I am asking for 30 more days of $50 per day. Say that again, I didn't hear the last one. Um, $50 per day, 30 days of $50 per day. Mm. Um, Officer Luster, did you send the notice by regular mail? Yes, ma'am. Did you complete an affidavit of posting? Yes, ma'am. And is the paint on the house in what area or is it everywhere? It's the entire house. It, it's basically where the paint has been just worn over the years and it's filthy. It needs to be pressure cleaned and painted. And with respect to the trash and debris, well, um, was that all around or was that? It, it's in regard to sanitary condition for the driveway and the sidewalk is filthy. And do you have um, the photographs that we're seeing on the screen? Do those photographs depict the paint situation on the house as well as the trash and debris in, in the driveway and the sidewalk? Yes, ma'am. Special Magistrate, on behalf of the city, I'd like to submit copy of the documentary file, including but not limited to the notice of violation, certified mailing documents, affidavit of posting, and all photographs. Uh, thank you, that request is granted. The city's uh, records contained in its file are, or documents contained in its file are made part of the record for this hearing. The city has proper notice with the certified mail and the posting. I will find the property remains in violation as cited, accept the city's recommendation, allow 30 additional days for compliance. After that, daily fines of $50 per day will be assessed until compliance is achieved. Thank you. Number 41, 1530 39th Street, CE 2112-0191. Officer Luster, West Palm Code. Certified mail was signed on 12-20-2021. City Hall and property also posted on 2-17-2022. I have spoke with the owner of this property, and the property was cited for clean and unsanitary conditions, painting of property, numbering standards are not visible from the road, uh, trimming of overgrowth of trees, and a prohibited trailer parked in driveway. Um, the owner is requesting 90 days to come into full compliance. 
and you'll see where there is a tarp on the, on the roof, but that was a previous case that Leans is running on that particular case. And I can give you the case number. It's CE21100167. So that was not reissued in my violation. Um, she is in process. Matter of fact, the day I posted the property, they were there pressure cleaning the property. So she's asking for the 90 more days, and she's going through an insurance issue also with the roof. So she feels like 90 days will give her time to deal with that issue. So I'm asking for the 90 days or $50 per day. Officer Lester, did you also send a notice by regular mail? Yes, ma'am. Did you complete an affidavit of posting? Yes, ma'am. And with respect to the trash and debris, um, can you just briefly describe where you're seeing that? And well, it, pressure cleaning of, of, of driveway and sidewalk. When I say sanitary, that's under the sanitary. And is there trash and debris on the? No, no. that's the sanitary it's, it's for the pressure cleaning. Yes, ma'am. And um, can you briefly describe, you said it, there was a trailer. Yes, ma'am. It's on the west side of the home, and it's a box trailer, a pool trailer. Um, let me see. Yes, and the there. photographs that we're seeing on the screen. There it is. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. The photographs that we're seeing on the screen support um, the observations that you made at the property. Yes, ma'am. Special Magistrate, the city would like to submit as evidence a copy of the documentary file, including but not limited to the notice of violation, certified mailing documents, affidavit of posting, and all photographs. Okay, the, um, that request is granted. The documents in the city's file are made part of the record for this case. The city has proper notice with certified mail on the posting, even though the respondent is not present. Based on the testimony and the evidence, I do find the property remains in violation. As cited, I will accept the city's recommendation to allow 90 additional days for compliance. After that, daily fines of $50 per day will be assessed until compliance is achieved. Number 42 is complied, 817 7th Street, CE 21120226. Number 43 is rescheduled, 1354 11th Street, CE 21120245. Number 44901 North Tamron Avenue, CE 21120265. Officer Luster West Palm Code. Uh, certified mail was signed on 12 24 2021, City Hall, and property was posted on 2 17 2022. I have spoke with the owner. I have met the owner at, on site. I have spoke with three different persons representing the owner. He claims to have a language barrier so I've had a lot of contact in regards to this property property was cited for uh, cleaning unsanitary conditions boarding certificate junk and operable vehicles uh, obstruction of right-of-way with trees landscaping contractors waste numbering standards evidence of engaging in a business uh, sorting, sorting the swell area and unpaved parking. The only violations that has come into compliance are the numbering standards, the landscaping, landscaping waste, the cutting, the um, removal of the overgrowth of the trees at the right of way and all other violations remain outstanding. However, I want to put on the record that 18106A clean sanitary condition is running fine, so you can disregard that one. Okay. And the 34102A, the junk and operable vehicle, I need to find an effect on because it will remove, be removed and come back. Okay. Also, the... Uh, Paving and marking of the parking lot is also running fine, so you can disregard that one. All the other remaining violation, I'm asking for 30 days or $100 per day after. There's a couple of landscaping related code sections. Which is the one that complied? The uh, landscape of contractor's waste. Contractor's so he had that removed. Okay. And he also cut back the overgrowth of the trees at sidewalk. Oh, 
So those two were complied. Well, and the address was complied. Officer Lester, did you also send notice by regular mail? Yes, ma'am. And did you complete an affidavit of posting? Yes, ma'am. And could you um, give us more of your observations about um, the boarding certificate where on the well, property? Well, the property was previously boarded some years ago, but it never obtained a, a boarding certificate. And I explained to the property owner on site that some of the boards are so worn, he needs to really reboard it and obtain the boarding certificate. So that's one reason he doesn't have a boarding certificate. Thank you. With respect to the junk vehicle that disappears and reappears, is it one vehicle or more than one? More than one. And in some of the previous pictures, you'll see where it was like three vans. And some of the vans were marked for sale. So that's what I was considering him engaging in business without a license. And he'll remove them, and then they'll come back. So I'm asking for a finding of fact on that. And then do you have um, photographs which support all of your testimony and observations? Yes, ma'am. Special Magistrate, the city would like to submit as documentary evidence a copy of the file, including but not limited to the notice of violation, certified mailing documents, affidavit of posting, and all photographs. The, uh, that is granted the city's documents contained in its file are made part of the record for this case. The city has proper notice with the certified mail and the posting. Um, just so I'm clear, so the evidence of engaging in business is the, all the vehicles, it's like he's running a used car lot over there. Yes. Yes, sir. Um, all right. Based on the testimony and the evidence, then, do it this way. I find the property has complied with city code section 744C4, 744C6, and that's mm -hmm. regarding the um, contractor, landscaping, contractor waste, and the trees and hedges obstructing the right of way. Property is also complied with 78.6 regarding numbering mm -hmm. standards. I find that uh, property was in violation of 34.102A regarding junk abandoned vehicle. However, uh, came into compliance, but not within the time frame specified in the notice. So that is a finding of fact. 18.106A and 94.485B1E are um, those are involved with other cases. So there we're not. Uh, not uh, assessing fines on those. There's already running fines on Correct. those from another case. Uh, I find that uh, 18265 regarding boarding certificate, 82151 regarding uh, engaging in a business without a proper license, 94442E regarding the landscaping requirements for the swale remain in violation. Mm -hmm. I will accept the city's recommendation, allow 30 additional days for those violations to be complied after that daily fines of $100 per day, until compliance is achieved. Thank you. That was I think that was tougher. <laughs> Number 45, 1400 7th Street, CE 22010184. Officer Luster, West Palm Coat. This property certified mail was signed COVID on 1 2024, also on 2 2 2022. Uh, property and City Hall was posted on 2-17-2022. I've had one uh, made contact with one owner of the property. Property was cited for um, work without a permit, required inspections, cleaning up one half of easement, uh, repairing of driveway, fence permit, well, obtaining a permit for the fencing, uh, fence maintenance, unpaved parking, and removal of a prohibited container, commercial container. What has come into compliance is the commercial container has been removed, the cleaning up of one half of easement, and all other violations in regards to fence, driveway, and permits have not come into compliance. I'm asking for 45 more days or $50 per day after. I have spoke with tenant on site and like I said, one property owner. And I'm asking for that, 45 days or $50 per day. 
Officer Luster, did you send the notice by regular mail? Yes, ma'am. Did you complete an affidavit of posting? Yes, ma'am. And with respect to the unpermitted work, is that just for fencing or is it for anything else? It is for the fencing and at that particular time when they installed the commercial trailer container in the rear of the yard. But that has been complied. So it's the fencing and the driveway that need permits. And the driveway. Yes, ma'am. And can you describe very briefly um, what we'll see in the photographs as to the fencing? Is it all around the house? Is it the a wooden size? fence did not have a permit to be installed, and it is in total disrepair around the entire property. And can and you briefly describe the issue with the driveway? The driveway, um, the property had a sewer line installation, which they had to tear up portions of the driveway in order to install the sewer line. So they need to get the driveway repaired or replaced good permit and with respect to no I'm sorry you said it um, it came into compliance I apologize no um, special magistrate the city would like to submit a copy of the uh, documentary file including but not limited to the notice of violation certified mailing documents affidavit of posting and all photographs That is granted the uh, documents in the city's file are made part of the record for this case. The city has proper notice with the certified mail on the posting, even though the respondent is not present. Based on the testimony and the evidence, I do find the property remains in violation as cited, except for compliance has been achieved with 744C5 and 94487B1. Is that those are the two that are in compliance? Uh, I will accept the city's recommendation, allow 45 additional days to cure all outstanding violations. After that, daily fines of $50 per day will be assessed until compliance is achieved. Thank you. Okay, and lastly, number 46, 1319 8th Street, CE 22010456. Officer Luster, West Palm Code. Certified mail was returned to us on 2-8-2022. Property in City Hall was posted on 2-17-2022. There's been no contact with this owner. The property was cited for cleaning unsanitary conditions, excessive growth, landscape maintenance, garbage can placement, overgrowth of garbage de debris and overgrowth, overgrowth, cleaning up one half of easement of overgrowth, and contractors' waste. This property, um, unfortunately, property owner died a few months ago, and I've had no contact with whomever is supposed to be you know, maintaining the property. So I'm asking for 10 days or abatement. Okay. Officer Luster, did you send out the notice of violation by regular mail? Yes, ma'am. And did you complete an affidavit of posting? Yes, ma'am. And in conjunction with the photographs that uh, will be seen on the screen, could you testify more? Um, about your observations? Uh, the property is, is quite overgrown and it is a uh, safety and health hazard in regards to the overgrowth. And the garbage cans are where they are underneath the carport in public view. And I'm just asking for the abatement 10 days. Special Magistrate, the city would like to submit a copy of the documentary file, including but not limited to the notice of violation, certified mailing documents, affidavit of posting, and all photographs. That request is granted. The city's documents in its file are made part of this uh, record for this hearing. So th th there's nobody, this is no. vacant at this point. Given, given that, uh, as well as the other circumstances that were testified, Two, regarding this property, I do find uh, property remains in violation as cited. I find those violations constitute a threat to the public health, safety, and welfare. Uh, the city has proper notice with the uh, posting following the return certified mail. Uh, I will accept the city's recommendation. I'll, I'll go ahead and allow an additional 10 days after that. The city is authorized to enter the property, abate the violations, and assess the cost. Thank you. Y'all have a great day. All right. Uh, 
let's just uh, go ahead and move right into, unless you need, do we need anything on the city side to reset for the next agenda if we move straight into it? All right, we have uh, two matters on our, um, on our reduction hearing schedule. Um, looks like we have a couple folks present. Um, I'm gonna need to swear you, swear you in in order for you to testify your uh, Testimony does need to be under oath, so if you'll stand and raise your right hands, I'll go ahead and place you under oath if you're going to be speaking to me about um, either of these matters. I have one taker. Ma'am, do you swear or affirm under penalties of perjury your testimony will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Sir, are you also testifying today? Okay, go ahead and stand and raise your right hand. Do you swear or affirm under penalties of perjury your testimony will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Thank you. All right, we have two cases. When your case is called, please come up to the podium to my right. The way that we will proceed is I'll get some background information from the city on the uh, request, and then after, um, after that, I will then come to you, and you can tell me about your request for the lien reduction. Once I've heard everything from both sides, uh, in all likelihood, I will enter an order that resolves the matter this morning. Uh, so let's go ahead and call the first case. Number 15175 Palmbrook Circle, CE 18020210. Okay, CE 18020210 was cited on February 12th, 2018, for failure to obtain the rental license and certificate of use. The property was taken to hearing on July 18, 2018. The property was given 30 days to comply or $200 a day. Um, the property was out of compliance for 450 days, resulting in a lien amount of $90,000. Um, Special Magistrate, the previous owner had filed for a lien reduction on January 15, 2020, and the settlement amount was $6,000. Uh, failure to pay that amount uh, reverted the lien back to $90,000, which now the new, new owner had to file for a new um, Lien reduction. So uh, today, the special magistrate, the city is seeking the previously settled amount, six thousand dollars. You said six thousand. Yeah. Was? Okay. And that was the. So this is a new owner, and that was the previous owner's yeah. request. The previous owner was the Right. Okay. Yes, sir. Go ahead and tell me your name and address, and then you can uh, then you can tell me about the uh, request. Sure. Good morning. My name is Marcelo Darren Nogare. Um, I'm requesting the lien reduction or or release uh, because this was hidden from the previous owner and during the closing transaction, and I can read a brief explanation of the situation if you allow me to. Uh, on November 27, 2019, we have closed on the purchase of the property of 5175 Palm Road Circle. Uh, the current uh, property owner is an LLC, Cap One LLC, and the seller at the time was Ilia Capital LLC. Uh, during our purchase transaction, the title commitment uh, obtained was obtained a few days before the closing date and identified a lien for an open violation with case number 160702. 3, 3, which is a different number. The seller of this property, again, Ilya Capital LLC, was, was owned by Ilya Mojilevsky. He requested additional time to apply for a lien reduction, additional time to close the transaction, to apply for the lien reduction. Therefore, both parties agreed at the time to close the transaction on 11 27 2019, subject to the execution of an escrow agreement at closing, authorizing the escrow agent to hold in escrow the amount of that lien, which was, which was at the time $19,900, to cover the full amount of uh, violation 16070233. After the seller obtained a loan reduction, showing proof of the payment, the remaining of the, of the uh, escrow money was released to him. While we performed a recent um, routine checkup, we found that the property had a second pre-existing lien that was attached to this property with case number 1802210, which also belongs to the previous owner, Ilya Capital LLC, and was recorded on 11 2019, just two days before the closing date that happened on two days, uh, on 11 27. Uh, we call that the gap period on the, on the uh, title insurance policy. Uh, 
So it became evident that the seller, Ilya Mozilevsky, was completely aware of the existence of this loan reduction. And at the time, he sold the property, but he chose not to disclose it. Um, this second lien was a surprise to us because it was never disclosed to the seller, like I said. And despite the closing affidavit that the seller signed saying that, that uh, he sworn actually in the affidavit that the property was free of and clear of all other liens, violations, open permits, and we have the document here for everything I'm saying here. Uh, so the, the property was recorded on public records after the closing date. That's why we, it wasn't discovered also at the time of the transaction. And that's the reason why we're requesting this. We had other issues with the seller of this property, uh, not disclosing that his assistant was the tenant at the time that she, she never paid rent. She used uh, the, uh, the uh, moratorium for, for COVID. So it took us over a year to get, her, to get out of there. Uh, it, cost us, it cost us like over $18,000. I have all the receipts and proofs of everything here to show if that's the case. And um, so what I'm requesting is if there's a possibility to release uh, our property from this lien and probably go after the seller, which was the, uh, the one that was in, in, in the fall at the time, and he failed to disclose it, even though he was aware, because he applied before the closing date for the lien reduction, like, like the officer said. is a $90,000 lien. Um, based on everything that I've heard, you know, I think the 6,000 is probably a, a more than reasonable number. I'm going to uh, reduce it back to that. Um, can you pay that in 30 days? 30 days? Yeah, yes. 30 days. Okay, so ordered. Thank you very much, sir. Case number 2733 Selkirk Street, CE 20030382. Thank you. Case CE 20030382 was cited on March 21st, 2020. Um, for failure to secure a building permit uh, re-roofing. The property was taken to hearing on April 21st, 2021. The magistrate gave the property owner 30 days or $50 per day for compliance. The property was out of compliance for 202 days, resulting in a lien amount of $10,100. Um, the applicant is the owner that caused the violation. Um, magistrate at this time, the city is seeking 50%. Um, the city did give this applicant, the owner at the time, several opportunities to acquire the permits and pass inspections. As you can see, um, it took about a year before they actually took it to hearing, um, trying to give the owners you know, time to get the proper permits and pass inspections. So the city is seeking 50%. address and then you can tell me about the request. Uh, Jennifer Beck Rodriguez, 733 Selkirk Street, West Palm Beach, Florida, 33405. Okay. Yeah, um, this issue arise from a fire. I might need to get you a little closer to the microphone. Okay, like that? Okay. This actually was due, caused by a fire in 2020, right when COVID hit. So, um, it was kind of in a, in a difficult situation for me to actually, you know, secure a roof over my head and my son's head, and then also trying to obtain a permit when everything closed down. Um, so that's when it, the issue essentially arise. I do understand that I had plenty of time to obtain a permit, but I couldn't just up, obtain a permit because I needed to actually find an engineer who was able to go and give me all of the product approvals and everything because the work was already done. So there was no inspection that could be done. Okay. And that's why it took as much time as it took? Well, it, and it also took some time because I also had COVID, 
my son also had COVID. Um, actually, what the time that I actually applied for the permit, I actually did it via email because the city was aware of that situation. Um, then it kind of just stayed up in the air because the problem is, is that they needed me to come in to sign and notarize a document. I still could not come in to do that due to COVID. Okay, thank you. Um, um, I just want to state that we understand that there are extenuating circumstances, but just Magistrate, please, please keep in mind that the property was cited on March 21st, 2020. They, um, the owner didn't apply for the permit until January 5th of 2021, and the permit wasn't issued until December 10th of 2021. Uh, if you look through the case history, you'll see there's um, numerous extensions were given every time they did speak with the applicant. It's not like the city was like, you need to do it right now or we're going to fine you. We did work with the applicant and give them and gave them several extensions. It just was not done on time. Would you like to respond, ma'am? Yeah. Um, so in addition to all this, it's it's really taken its toll financially because my home is, is actually almost being uh, sold at a foreclosure. So this is a big issue uh, for me to pay. Yes, so we have, um, we couldn't do the closing because of this lien. And this is an inheritance from my father. Okay. Anything else from the city? No. If I reduce this to $2,000, can you pay that within the next 60 days? Yes. Thank you. Good luck, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you. And I think that concludes our work here this morning. Anything else on the agenda? No, that's it. All right, it's uh, 12, 12, oh wait, by the iPad, 12, 12 by the city's clock, and we stand adjourned. here well before uh, even 11.30 if it wasn't for the, for the yeah, sure. Well, I'm sitting here and I heard, uh, I've never seen this before. <laughs> you never want to hear your technical engineers go, I never saw this before.